Pete Drummond. Richie thank Jarvis. You, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, man. Thanks. You're actually, I think, the first drummer to come and visit in the new house. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yes, it's great. I'm, I'm, I feel honoured. <laughs> oh, I'm honoured. Because, I mean, I've, I've, I, well, I, I've known you for a long yeah. time. You haven't known me because I've seen you on stage. Like, uh, first time I saw you was the drummer's weekend. Oh, yeah. You played there. And I'm like, who's this kid? He's a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, that's the answer. It's like, who's this kid? Get up there, you know, just do all these chops or whatever. And then it's like, within 30 seconds of you playing, there was not one jaw in that auditorium that wasn't on the floor. Wow. It was, and this is back, I think you would have been maybe in your teens? Yeah, I think, what, year was it? Uh, 03 or something? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah 03. Maybe even earlier, I'm yeah. not sure. But, and yeah. you were like... Came out, yeah, the, the the blonde through the hair. Oh, you know? man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you had that. You had Whoa. that going on for you for a while. Um, <laughs> I saw that. I was like, I was like, yeah, I could lose my game, man. And I think that was a, I think that for me, because you were also there with Will Hull, Hull Brown at the same, yeah, right, same, same right. thing. So, and it was like watching that, mate, we walked out of the auditorium and we was like, what the fuck was that? Wow. Like, dude, it was a real turning point for a lot of people, you know. Oh, thanks, man. Oh. I'd never think about it like that. I I mean, it, it's always funny when you're in a driver's seat because I, I remember playing at all of those things and just coming away from it just feeling like I didn't play as well as I could have, you know, because there's but, nerves and but everything we're all, else. And, we're all like that yeah, at some point. It's I, yeah, it's, it's horrible. It's <laughs> I great. remember that stuff and I'm like, oh, man. It's like, look, look back at it because I've got some clips here. We, we, we are gonna, oh, I, we're going to delve into them, you know. We, we have to for the, for the viewers and listeners. So, <laughs> um, so you, a couple of things I, w- I wanted to talk to you about is that from there, I mean, you, you've always been based in Sydney. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, Blue Mountains. Blue Mountains, yeah, that's yeah. great though. Yeah. I rode, I actually, okay, this is completely off topic. I did the Great Victorian bike ride. Oh, yeah. Twice. I rode from the Blue Mountains to Victoria over nine what? days. What? Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> to be a cyclist, yeah. Far out. I think the biggest day was 240 k's. Wow. Yeah, like you come away like legs are like this. That's awesome. Yeah. And you get massages and then six hours later you're back on a bike. Far out. Did it twice. I will, I will never do it again. <laughs> Man. Even having done it once well, would be yeah too much for me. Oh, uh, yeah I was my my taint was wow. it was like concrete granite when I got back to Melbourne because well, oh, you, you rode back so it's like yeah. you ride back into the into the state it's like back where the um, spirit of Tasmania is Port Melbourne you're yeah. like okay cool all right well here's my bed I'll see you later it was just like non like oh, yeah. rode for nine days straight but anyway so Blue Mountain so it's really pretty up there yeah it's really pretty um, so Sydney based um, educator. You're yeah. a big you you you're a big educator. Yeah, a lot of people probably don't know that. I you know like it's something that I've always been passionate about because I I mean I'm probably not that much different from the guys that I love or anybody else, but the drums are fascinating from a lot of different angles. One of which is just trying to work out how it all functions. Yeah, do you know like I've always tried to pull things apart and then work out what the code of those things are. It's a bit of a know? mystery. Yeah, I mean, it can be a bit yeah. of a real mystery. So yeah. I sort of cottoned on to the idea of permutations really early on. I, we know. I, uh, I've got clips. Yeah, I, we, I know. <laughs> and so that was a massive turning point for me because I I started to understand that anything that I could see somebody that I admired play, I could break down into components. Yeah. And then sort of go sideways from there and work out what. Uh, series of exercises that came out of. So, do you, do you, is there anyone in particular you you uh, or you're inspired by? Oh, yeah, I mean Virgil, obviously. Who isn't? I think if you grew up in Australia, you grew up Australia. You know, like, fuck, you know. Watching him play the local pub on a Friday night. Oh you know. man, you know, it's just in so many ways. It's not for me. It's not, and never has been with any of those guys. The notes in particular, or like learning particular licks or phrases. Yeah, yeah. It's more like, particularly with him, it's just the complete other dedication. It's still learning that lick of like, 
How, how did he get to that? I'll yeah. Manage, and then I try and... I actually try and... Basically... It's like, find the the process that that comes from. That yeah. one little piece. Like, if you think of it like a, you know, a, a Lego of a tree. Or, if, how I would do it, it's like, okay, Virgil is the completed Lego set. Yeah. I am going to destruct it, de- deconstruct this brick by brick and then do the manual for it and yeah. go, hey, people. Yeah. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And some sort of stuff you've showed me just before, I think that is... Probably, or yeah, the fruit of the tree and other things. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, I guess from my point of view, I was never interested in learning to play licks. I was never interested in learning to play... Lick of the Day or... Yeah, any of that what was stuff. That guitar, what was that DCR guitar series like? Hot Licks. Hot Licks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. man, Hot Licks. <laughs> well, so, so I sort of wanted to be able to play the drums, so whatever... You know, you see somebody play a particular phrase, and that comes from a complete system or a, a family of of uh, of sort of exercises or, yeah. or whatever it is that 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 little piece that you see is from. Maybe it's maybe that person hasn't done all of the permutations, but I sort of go, well, that's a really cool idea. I'd like to be able to play that in every subdivision, in every way, yeah. starting at every point in the bar, in every time signature, with each part of my body, you know, and I go, This cool. is why watching you gives me a headache sometimes. <laughs> so they go, I, I don't know what he's doing. I know the one is here somewhere. Yeah. You know. But then it means that you can germinate so much stuff from one idea from somebody else. Yeah. Or, or you can sort of reverse engineer what their process was. You so know? you're judging by, I mean... Seeing how you play and and kind of getting the feel of how you you you, you work, um, education or being an educator is it, it feels kind of natural for you. Like just judging by what I'm, I'm yeah, hearing, right, yeah. I've seen it's like it's it's like you haven't just gone right. I want to be not not just the best player I could possibly be and go out the world. I mean, you could let's be honest, the color will play away. You could go around the world. You could do clinics. You you could you know tour the world and all that kind of stuff, but. You can only cram so much into an hour and a half to two hours for clinic. Sure. People walk away and go, I've got a handout. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like like cookie cards, like handout, handout, yeah. clinic, clinic, you know. So, um, sh- but, you know, I won't go into detail about what, what, <laughs> what, what <laughs> yeah. you showed me. Yeah. But, but I just, now I understand, you know, because I've seen your educational stuff online, you know, and even that, like, even though it was a year ago, yeah. it was a year ago, yeah. it's like, this is still really good. This is still fresh because it's not only a new concept but uh, I think a lot of people a lot of musicians especially drummers go how do I get here well yeah. you need to do this you yeah. know and yeah. it's kind of and I think that's been personally I think it's been forgotten well I think it really is for me like I think it what I'm trying to do at the moment comes from my uh Desire when I was growing up yeah. to have really focused practice time, like to not to just be as efficient as possible. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And it's I had to run about, around and do a lot of trial and error. It's about quality, not quantity. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And I, so, mind you, I, I am gonna. I took a photo of you when it turned up. <laughs> now, if, now, I was about five minutes away with coffee. Pete was. Had a practice pad sticks out <laughs> on the bottom of the car. So, <laughs> well, you know. Hey, you got five minutes. Yeah, exactly. You can get yeah, something you, you done. Do, you, hey, you've got a, you've got a single straight exercise for five That's minutes. That's right, exactly. Yeah. And that exercise, actually, the reason that I recorded that and just chucked it on YouTube is because that exercise changed my hands completely. Just yeah. that one thing. Yeah. It's, it's like that... Because uh, it forces you to work on the weak things in order to play the things you're good at at any given tempo. You yeah. Know, so yeah. you have to start. starts with the left hand. It starts... With all of the problem areas, and because that that's one of the things is I I used to hate when I was practicing changing a metronome, you know. Oh, you I'd be like, I want to work on single strokes. Okay, five BPM. Oh, yeah. great. Okay, well, my if I want to just do the left hand, I have to drop it to this speed or yeah. whatever. So my goal was just like, oh, well, I don't care. I just want to do this at one tempo. So I need to work my left hand yeah. more to build it up. It's really funny. It was um, uh, I'll show you to now that that a musician the. They, they actually no, not even remotely in anything with music. You know, I think yeah. they played the oboe. Yeah, yeah, right. at some yeah, point, yeah, yeah. You know, and they said, um, uh, "Exploit your strengths. You know, work on your weaknesses." Yeah. So, and I was like, 
this actually makes a lot of sense, especially for me, because I'm always thinking when I'm playing live or no matter where I am, and it could be either in a studio or in a grand ballroom or whatever, I'm always constantly wor- worrying about my left hand. Yeah, right. Always. always. You know, if I'm playing going ghost dance, you know, is my f- are my fingers right? Yeah, yeah right. Am right. I using the right grip? My, my technique, you know, and this is actually all running through my head. Yeah. You know, as, lo- as well as the music, the click track, the yeah, sequence, right. the band leader or whatever, so... Um, doing a groove or laying it down, I'm always thinking, you know, my left hand. So I'm always pushing my left hand. So cool. when I'm moving around the kit, most people will finish if they've got a crash or, or a chine or something over here. It's like, well, yeah, I can hit that. Yeah. But if I can end that, that bar phrase or that that fill yep. on the down on the left on the left and hit the crash yep. or the chine on my left or the hats, yep. you know, and that's, and now it's almost, it's a subconscious thing. That's cool. Trying to stop it. Yeah, yeah. Someone, yeah. it was actually another a drummer who came out. Um, he goes, man, your left hand, it's always, it's always doing something. It's never stopped. Yeah. It's, it's almost like a balance. It's like, yeah. nah, it's not. I need to do it more. I need to do it more. I need yeah. to do it more. Yeah. And then I thought, maybe I'm doing too much. I might have to try and bring it back. I might have to, you know, so it was that kind of enemy inside my head. Yeah, you know, yeah, right. Like, do I need to work on my left hand more than my right? And yeah. then it was like, should I work on my right more than my left? And I kind of got to a point where I'm at now. I'm not. It's still not a happy balance, but it's like generally I need to work on both. Yeah. And being a trail player. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's almost like it's it's. Well, there's two different grips all together. You know, it's a different discipline. I used to play traditional grip, and then I broke my elbow. What? You hold yeah. on, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you used to play trail. Yeah. And then I busted my elbow and had surgery, so I actually can't rotate oh, my so... elbow past there on this hand. So, wow, I've so you, got, you have no choice. No, but in your, your left hand is phenomenal. Oh, I've, thanks, got, I've got the remembering video. Vinny oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, oh, everyone's got to see it. So, so, yeah. But but yeah, so I've got all of the pronation, but no supination, or very limited supination in my left hand. So trying to play traditional grip, I've got no so even just do Even just doing that I exercise, can't. you can't. So it was wow. like, okay, well, I had no I'm idea. done here. So that <laughs> happened when I was 21. That's, and then, I was going to say, that's not long ago, but I think we're both, are, we, are, we, are you close to 40? Yeah. You close to 40? Yeah. I am 40. <laughs> so, so the thing is that, um, yeah, that, that really, in a lot of ways, because I used to practice traditional grip and match grip yeah. and do equal share of both okay. and, yeah. and, you know, just to try and have the overall perspective. Yeah. And then when that happened, I was like, okay, well, that makes that decision for me. It's almost like, you know, <laughs> it, was like, it was a blessing in a way. You know a, lot, a lot of people, man, would have gone, no, I can't play now. Oh, yeah, right. Well, yeah. the doctor told me, the first doctor said that that I probably wouldn't play. And I was like, my parents said, get a different doctor. Yeah, it's, so, like, my, 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 uh, it's like when you hear people saying, oh, you know, I'll, I'll be in a wheelchair. wheelchair and they're like, you got a second opinion? No, get a second opinion. Yeah. You always get the second opinion, you know. And yeah. the thing is, man, I had no idea. Yeah. Man, right. like, you know, obviously, you've overcome that. You know. Well, the thing is that it was just, a, and it was a real split decision because the surgeon said to me, um, okay, you've got two choices. I can give you all of the pronation or all of the supination. And it was like, he was deciding how want? he was going to deal with yeah. the surgery. So I thought to myself, well, I play piano and that's important to me. So I need to be able to rotate yeah, my hands you do. forward. Yeah. And yeah, by the way, you're playing piano, guitar, bass. Please stop. I'm making us look bad. <laughs> But the guitar playing's annoying. Oh, of course, because you... Yeah. And of course, the, the further down the fretboard yeah, you are... Is, oh, and you've got, you've got this... So some of my chord shapes are oddball, but that's just the way it has to... But I mean, it's, it's, really, it's really funny how an injury can dictate it. Really yeah. dictate your playing. I've almost thought about learning to play guitar left-handed. So you've got that. Just so I've got that. But it's not, you know... You know who... Capos are invented for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who is a good, uh, not, actually not a great guitar player, but a pretty good guitar player? It's Marcus Ryan. He's a lefty too. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. He, like I remember being in his house as a kid, like staying overnight, you get the guitar out, I'm like, you play guitar, and he's yeah. a lefty. Yeah, right. But he slays it, you know, oh. metalhead. Sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, and cool. it's like yeah. shredder. So yeah, I love it. Every time I oh, see yeah. him, I'm like, Marco Miniman's a great guitar player too. I think Thomas Thomas Lane, Lane great bass player. So um, yeah. um, Jago Bola, he's a great oh, bass yeah, player. Right. Yeah. And even Dave Weckl, yeah, Weckl slaps the bass on one of his. Uh, yeah, she can and, uh, albums, yeah. And uh, um, here and there, or one of those tunes of so, um, that second solo record that he did. Yeah, it's, a, uh, it's like it was, it was um, Heads Up, 
Play, yeah, he plays the A section. That's right. And Slack, I'm like, you know what? That's it. How does this, how? You yeah. know? And he's like, and you see the credits, like, uh, Dave Wood was endorsed, endorsed by Yamaha's, yeah, and Marie right. Firth, Warwick, ba- Warwick, and yeah. some bass. You're like, right. hang on, what? Like, what? <laughs> like, hang on, what? How did, this, how did this happen? But see, that's the thing, man, like, and which sort of relates to the, what you said before about who, you know, which guys in, that I was inspired by, and it's probably all of us who are around the same age. It was Weckle and Vinny and Virgil and Gad. Terry Bozio. Terry Bozio, Gad, you yeah. know. It's, it wouldn't be, everyone goes, oh, the trio. So you know it's Weckle, Gad, yeah, and Nicole. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. You know. absolutely. But then you got, yeah, Bozio. Yeah. It's like the, he was a massive thing for me, actually, Terry Bozio. Because I can kind of, I actually see, you know, I know you're a, a big Virgil fan. Yeah, I see, absolutely. I probably see more Bozio in your playing. Well, I like you're, that. Because of That's your, cool. I mean, I mean you've, got, you've almost got the uh, independence and yeah, well, that was of, a big of Denali, thing. But you've also got, but it's more got the independence and the, the musicality of Bozio in your play as Thanks, well. Man. You're not just thinking, I'm hitting, I'm hitting an 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. You're actually no, yeah, structurally melodic, and melodically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that, that that's why I think I really gravitated towards that because particularly him and, and Dave Weckl, the melodies are beautiful. Weckl's oh, yeah. playing is so melodic all the time. Do you know? Yeah, and it really came out with that um, uh, his first solo, uh, solo album after he did Hardwired. There's a massive gap. Yeah, right. the soul. Yeah, and like yeah. He went with that real groove. He yeah. actually went to more of a musical place than yeah. that fusiony. I mean, I love classic oh, Weckl. Man, eighties Weckl. Ma- master Plan, the shit, cover man. the eighties. Yeah, Yamaha, you know, the, you know, X Ray Invisible, with the, and a massive like. Oh yeah, the big the rats, rats, the rats, the refrigerator. <laughs> I need to make my drum sound. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you yeah, know, it's exactly. like, like India Town. I, I, need, I need to take the attack of the drum, but the bend of a yeah, Simmons electric. Right. So I'm going to get this oh, fridge man. for that. He's the guy. And, that, that, and he comes to Australia. I remember he, Frank brought him out, and I saw him, and I was like, he was playing, I think it was Mike Stern trio. Oh, yeah. At, right. the dr- at Dallas Woods Hall. That was like 98. I think. Yeah, okay. And then he did a clinic. And it was like, here's Mike Stern, Dave Weckl. Here's Dave Weckl, Dave Weckl. And I was like, I, this is good. This was phenomenal. Yeah. And I ended up, I think it was two years later, I ended up buying his personal Maple Custom kit. Oh, wow. Which was also played by Gary Novak, Tom yeah, Sloan, yeah, you know, right. all those guys. I bought it. And then Jeez. he comes back out to Australia. And I'm like, hey, you want to buy it? Yeah, you want to buy it? Goes around Australia, comes back, got a mark on it, you know. He's right. like, and I, I had a personal lesson with him. Which back in the day, I think the dollars were like 50 cents. It was 300 US wow. dollars for like three hours. Wow. And. That would have been amazing. Yeah. I was, oh, I was scared. Oh, yeah. You got like a 16 year old boy, you know, oh, meeting his idol. Oh, yeah. You know, and yeah. it, it was, and you know what, it was, I'll never forget that lesson, but we talked about the kit most of the time. I was like, yeah, cool. I had the 16, it's got an initial ply, wow. and the bass drum's got an initial ply. I'm like, yeah, it's, I, now it's like I hear it and go, yeah, you can hear that extra the, yeah, the depth yeah. in it. But, uh, um, but yeah, but, like, that, was, that was a phenomenal experience. Well, I, I met him that year with Gordo. Um, we were in the drum shop He's in Sydney. A, God, and, Gordo. Oh, man. I mean, yeah. I watched a, I watched a clip, someone was video on my phone and he's dancing, he's you know, playing around, not caring. Oh, yeah. it's the kid is caring, but it's like yeah. he's having a good time then it's like do good and it's like yeah. straight in yeah seeing this mean, like he's a beautiful, beautiful drummer. He's a I've met him boss. I've met him a couple of times. Yeah. Shaking his hand. Yeah. You know, it's like his hand kinda of goes over my hand, you know. <laughs> and I'm just like, mate, I just you know it's like catching up with John Watson. It's yeah. like yeah, it's like it's, it's yeah, what, it's what I yeah. It's, I know. it's like they're, it's like they're legends, yeah. You know of Australian yeah. music, absolutely. Yeah, you know, and oh, what I's pocket is redonkulous. It's, it's it's crazy. I remember the first time I did these support gigs with a singer, Mike O'Shea, and we played mm. we played um, doing supports for James Rain, oh. and I remember hearing what I just play a cowbell intro to. I can't remember what it was. It, it might have been. Hammerhead or something like that. Would have been um, what's a what's that blue oyster bar? The blue oyster cult. Oh yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah. <laughs> Fear the Reaper. But man, it was one of those moments where he played just almost quarter notes, and I was like, "Fuck!" 
How do you play quarter notes that good? On a cowbell. Just how are they <laughs> that strong and the pockets so deep and they're so in time and the note durations are just glorious. And you, and you, and you look and at him like, and, it's, it, it, and it's like, he's thinking, he's just not, he's, yeah. he's in the zone, just, he's just playing cowbell and he yeah. wants to go. You know, they say if, if Ringo can play a floor time and make everyone move. Yeah. Go, uh, why don't I can play cowbell yeah. and make the, the world bounce, you know? It's just, well, see, the thing from... Getting back to Gordo, is like when I first, I basically like finished school, and then a lot of my friends were going to uni. And, yeah, cause, you know, so you obviously went to high school. You did your yeah, HSC, HSC, yeah, 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 okay. And I, for my HSC performance, I did this uh, a drum solo where it was just me playing by myself, and I had like an octopad, like an SPD pad. So you were doing the, different you were, pads. You were doing the and guitar, triggering, yeah. You were doing the guitar, guitar so the drum, drum off before it really was. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, so I had like a trigger on my bass drum and had a cycle of like four bass notes and was playing like chords and... Oh, the Kira Jimbo kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah like yeah. the Kira Jimbo vibe. So of course, of course, so, people go like, you know, right, here's <laughs> Pete, it's not going to be normal. It's going to be something. <laughs> like, and it's, it's going to be good, you know. <laughs> try and do something weird. But, um, but yeah, so that was for my HSC. And then my... All my friends were sort of going to uni and I don't know, I just, I think I was a bit socially anxious for a start, you know, and, and I you are, did You are the, you know where drummers be there, yeah, so we don't right, actually exactly. have friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I wasn't sure about going to uni, I didn't really know how to approach it and I thought, honestly, I'll probably get more done if I just stay home and practice. So I just, that's when I practiced, like... Well, that's kind the of the most, whole thing is you know? perfectly worth it It's if it's not, you know, it's it's, well, it's kind of the same thing. It's like, you could go to uni and you could have your private lesson every week. You could do your your, your notation, you yeah. could do your second instrument, you could do your classes and whatever. I actually found with my uni, like I was spending more time doing other things. Other stuff. And I was like, oh, I should probably practice sometime this week. Yeah, well, see, that's what I, I was lucky because I had piano lessons. I started when I was 11 because my mum sort of insisted that yeah. I take up a melodic instrument and so I was doing I musicianship yeah. and yeah. the piano I did too and because my dad played guitar so I learned a bit of that and um, so I sort of had that stuff and was always writing and doing different things anyway yeah. and then when I first got out of school I just practiced as much as I possibly could to get better and I, I had a goal I, I set myself a goal of like 12 months later that I would go have a lesson with Gordo because I knew his sister. I was like, I want to get as good as I can in the next year. So, so that, did you, did you so run, not did you wasting your sister money. Oh, can, I, can, I, can I speak to you? Well, it was funny. Now, we, I, we were at the Dennis Chambers. Um, well, when Dennis was oh, out here that doing was, the Zilden Day or something. What was it, like, 94? Oh, yeah, he played the grain store in Melbourne for in the strip club. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. oh, mate. I, oh, dude, I remember that clinic. Yeah. It was standing room only for three hours. Oh, it was crazy. Mad, mad. It was crazy. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, then I, as I was leaving, I saw Gordo sitting with this girl and I was like, I plucked up the courage to go and talk to him. I was like, You're oh, so, hi, Gordo. I, I don't want to talk to, I, I didn't want to talk to, I don't want to talk to the girl. I don't I want to talk, talk to girls. girls. <laughs> but, um, I know and, your sister. Is yeah, I know, and that's how I opened it up. I was like, oh, I've got to tell him because I'm like, you know, oh, I know Kathy, your sister, and I wanted to get a lesson. Yeah. And I think she told him about me at some point, so he was... I had heard my name or this, something. This, you know, this drummer's going to come up, so I'm warning you. He's, like, <laughs> he's got to, you know, ask you for a lesson. <laughs> so I went and had a lesson with him, and I'd read in Skinful magazine. I don't know if you remember that thing, right? You're not going to believe this. This is the craziest thing. I, I caught up a little while ago with Carl Lewis. Oh, yeah, cool. I love that guy. Yeah. He, he's a guy in car, you just go, I want to give you a hug. You know? <laughs> He, uh, originally, he's, he was getting rid of all his modern drummers. Oh, yeah. And I was like, the morning off, he said, oh, look, I, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't get upset, I can't part with them. I'm like, dude, it's fine. I'm, I'm more interested in actually hanging out and having a coffee. Yeah. So he, um, he let me buy a, a, a tub, but I've got a full tub, a full massive tub of skinful and drums yes. in there and I pull it back going down Ferrugia yeah, God. I don't remember the Gordo like was the up, same in, up, in, up, up here. in the stratosphere with the 8, 10, 4 yeah. like, the oh, grey kit was it the grey the, the quartz grey yeah. yeah and so like he's had those um, shells cut down now <gasps> yeah he come down they're, they're shorter oh, that's it I'm calling it no I mean they're, they're I know they're, they're good they're good it's like I, have, I, have a, I personally have a thing and look, you know, probably not so much, you know, back in the day, but it's like if someone goes, oh, I've got a 10 by 10, I want to go 2 by 8, it's like, dude, yeah, don't. 
<laughs> you know, now you kind of go, I can't find a 10 by 8 yeah, you know, exactly. of that era. Makes so, sense, yeah. And of course, you know, as soon as you cut it down, someone pops up 30 seconds later, 10 by 8 quarts grey, you know, you're like, oh! <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I remember... Yeah, those skinful magazines. Just look at yeah, that. Like, that's oh, hilarious. Yeah. yeah. But like some of the, the content of those, it's like, this they is good. pre-YouTube, pre-internet, yeah. pre-everything. It's like, you would hang to spend that two ninety nine, yeah. and you had to go, oh, Darren Ferrugia, he yeah. lives down the street, I don't care, he's in a magazine, it's famous, you know. <laughs> or it's like, um, Andrew Gander. Yeah. Oh, Mate, okay. don't even get me started. Well, oh, the, first, oh. the first thing that happened for me was that Gordo, I went and had that lesson, and I picked his brain about the Skinful article. Because I read in there that David Jones gave him a 12 hour practice routine. And oh, so yeah, I went to the lesson, I was like, what is this thing? And he gave it to me, and then I went and did it for about a year. Wow. And then I caught up with him again. We did some clinic, and I, my playing had improved out of size. And we did this clinic, and, and, um, and I said, oh, thanks for that practice routine. Like I've been doing it since then. He said, he said, you're not supposed to do it that long. I said, I only did it for six weeks. He's like, I should never have given it to you. It's like, oh, that's, you know what? But then, that's brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. Then after that, I, I was on this gig and I I knew Andy Gander was playing afterwards. Oh, God, Andy. Oh, and so I begged the band to let me do a solo at the, the beginning of the last tune because I thought he'll be there, so yeah. I'll get a drum solo. And then he heard me play and he thought it was really, like, you know, he said, oh you know, something complimentary. And, and then we started hanging out. And then around that time, he and Gordo, he was living with Gordo, Gordo's place. No. So I used to just, just go just... stay with them. And the three of us just used to hang around and stay up all night and trade and talk about drums and get the two kids and you're just trading and there's rules of trading. It's like, neighbors, only going to play. Nah, fuck the neighbors. Like the neighbors. It yeah, was you, like, can't, you can't hear it. Yeah, it's like, but you know, we do things like Andy and I, I remember... <laughs> Andy and I got together at one point and he was like, oh, I've got this clinic on the weekend and um, so I just want to play everything in quintuplets and septuplets. So we'd be like, okay, we're playing so this week know, we're six, doing... eight. All we're doing is we're just going to play quintuplets and, you know, whatever. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, man, let's go. You know? <laughs> so just having that, because it wasn't lessened, you were, it, I was like the little brother in a way. Like you we were, just hung out and those guys... You taught me so much stuff. You were probably uh, living a part of your life that most people, like drummers especially, would dream of. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you take it, you got an opportunity. Yeah. And that was an opportunity. It's like, hey, you want to come live with us? You know? Yeah. And you've got two of the, you know, Australia's actually developed, you know, have, we've developed, we have got a lot of killer drummers, yeah. you know. Absolutely. And back then, that era was, you had a handful, like, a handful of Australian drummers, you go, Oh, who's playing on this? Oh man, you got to hear the latest. You know, the car yeah. or album has got. Yeah, that's right. right. You know, exactly. And you go, yeah, I'm gonna get it. Yeah, you know? and you yeah. go spend your twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Yeah. There's a place called Basement Discs. Oh yeah, okay. I'll take you to it. We'll, yeah, cool. We'll go to the city one day. We'll have, hang awesome. out and get some. Uh, we'll spend eighty-seven dollars and smash over car. Yeah, on good. Um, and I'll take you to Basement Discs. It's kind of where it was. You'd, you'd go. That's where you went and got your imports. Yeah, yeah. So you'd spend yeah. forty-five bucks. Yeah, your hard-earned money as a student yeah. or a drummer or whatever. Yeah, and you go. I have got the latest. You know, Weckle or Collier or Gap Yeah, yeah. There was like Birdland in Sydney. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So, but you were living. Well, yeah. You were the, living the dream. The thing life. was that, that, you know, like, it, it was almost like I, there was an audition that I didn't know happened. It's like, it's like I'm, I'm living a permanent audition for the next <laughs> two years and I don't even know about it. Well, there was this phone call conversation where I was just, because I was practicing so much, I was talking to Gordo on the phone. And, um, and then we were just talking about, he was saying, well, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm working on my rudiments. And, and I was playing hand-to-hand flams. And I said, like, I've got them, you know, they're pretty slow. I said, yeah. like, I'm playing them at 140 beats a minute, like 16th notes. And Yeah, that's slow. Yeah, well, yeah, see, slow. I had no perspective. And he said, what, you mean eighth notes? I said, no, 16th. And he was like, <laughs> what? And we were just on the phone. It was like the landline. And he goes... He goes, what? what? Play, hang on, can you play it? And so I just put a metronome on yeah. and played a loop. Like I said, it's only for a couple of bars. Yeah. It's not like continuous. But I played it and then and then he goes, hang on a sec. Andy <laughs> wants to talk to you. And then Andy gets on the phone and goes, Gordon said you're doing this thing. Can I hear it? And I, <laughs> I played it and then Andy goes, when are you coming down? <laughs> 
What do you? When can you show us how to do that? <laughs> so it's, it it's, was, you have to, uh, you and have, I was full of really my own sort of concepts yeah. about lots of different things about how the all that shit, this how the drums worked and stuff. So I think. I at least had some stuff to bring to the table that was different, even though I you, think a lot of the time they would go, you know what you're talking about, you fucking weird it's like, kid. It's but, like, is it, <laughs> see, if that happened now, it's like, you, what, you, what you run on the internet, it doesn't well, know. Yes. It, it, just, it just don't. Yeah. So back in the day, you were, you were blowing people away before you even hit the stage with, uh, I, I think, I mean, I saw you play with Dragon a couple of times. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. Ooh, we've got a fly. We've got a door. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of flies in here. Uh, you were kind of, even with, with Dragon, it's like, I'm watching you play. It's like, this is a sign of Pete I've never seen. And then, you, then there's like a, a flavoursome feel and go, oh, there it is. There yeah, it is. Cool. It's like, But like, back, getting back to yeah, yeah. Like, getting back to where you were living, you yeah. know, in this drum isolation. Basically, you know, yeah. Well, they, you were, you were you were you were probably coming up with concepts where people were going, ah, uh, yeah, mate, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, well, you know, and now people are like, oh man, well, this yeah. is awesome. This yeah. is great, you know. Well, you know, like at that, at, and I think that I loved hanging out with them for so many reasons, but it was also because they turned me on to all this other stuff that I didn't know anything about. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Whereas I'd be in there, I remember talking to Gordon, I'd be like, Virgil, 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 and this Virgil, and Vinny, 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 Vinny. He's like, dude, have you ever heard Philly Joe Jones? Like, do you even know where you any listen, of this you, comes Have you listened from? to any Wayne Shaw Yeah, that's all? right. Have you know? heard anything <laughs> pre-1984? You're like, 84? Like, what? What was it born? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. so the... So, you know, that was such a great thing in so many ways. Just, I remember them kicking my ass around. You probably needed Different it. things. Oh, yeah. We all need it. We oh, all, yeah. Man. John Cornier, yeah. he, he, I, I tell people, I was like, I need to get my drumming into gear. Just see John Cornier why. He'll beat your ass into <laughs> submission. He'll right. make you good within like a week. That's and awesome. He won't, and you know what? He will not give you the choice. And yeah. I like that. Yes. Yeah. It's like... You walk, you come away motivated. You go, I'm yeah. depressed because I'm, I realise how crap I am at the moment. I'm super excited because I know I'm getting better already, and this guy's motivating me to do it. Yeah, you know. And I always thought about, I'll, I always sort of had it as a, a goal that the next time I went down and stayed, that I'd have all that shit together. You know, what I mean? it's like, okay, whatever we did last time, I'm going to practice. Do you ever feel like that? Like you, you'd leave, and these two goals sit down at a coffee table and go, right, right, we're going to practice. I think they thought. We got this stuff. I think they thought. Wow, it's quiet now. <laughs> it's like it's, at least it stopped talking about shit. <laughs> at least it's, I, I remember Gordo getting the shit to me one day. We we're just driving around and he just goes drums, drums, drums. Like because we were, I was just talking to him about drums. Can't you talk about cars like, or drums, drums or drums, something? Drums, you know? you know? But, you it's, know, it's, I think, I, yeah, I, I get it. It's yeah. a beautiful thing. It's, it's a great, it's a great. So thing. I love those guys, like you know, I haven't as people, but as drummers as well. I, you know, like, I tried yeah. playing a setup like Gordo. I tried because I've got the eight, ten, yeah. 12, 14, 16, You know, yeah. I tried an eight, ten, fourteen, mate. I think I missed that eight. <laughs> you know, I had. I think you know. I think the, the singing hit more. It's like I had the eight. I was going, I went from a twelve. Yeah, two and eight. You yeah. know, so I had I had the weckle snare. I was really getting to the weckle, you know. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know, so I had the eight, 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 ten, fourteen. So the sound guy goes, "You haven't been hitting that the first time eight much." <laughs> I went, oh, "I'm trying." <laughs> you know, I hit it every so often. The Motown, take it to the back. Yeah, Gut, you know, it's like it's too high for that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. back the ten. It didn't last very long, but he had that stuff for decades. Yeah. Well, you the know. thing about both those guys too is that they had. The same thing as me, in as much as what was important to them was all of the music. So all of the technical stuff and all of the theoretical stuff is as important as deep music playing yeah, and musicality, and simplicity, and great sounds. And, and I, think, I think I um, think for seeing your playing, it's it's very evident. 
You know, yeah, right. I'm, like, I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. It's not like, you know, you shoot the baked potato going, right, so how many songs have we played tonight before? None. Yeah. You know, it's not, you know, you, I remember seeing Novak the first time. Oh, man. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know if I've told the story on, on the podcast online, but um, I went to, when I was at Anaheim, I went to Nam, and right. I said, how's oh, this guy see you going over to play? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm so shit lag because, you know, get a Red Bull. Yeah. And I was like, how big a can can you go? I'm so, <laughs> I'm, I am ruined. <laughs> It's the it's the Friday night, so it's two days in there already, and I'm already system overload, full of cream barbecue. Or you know, yeah, you know, yeah. So, right, so we sit, so I'm sitting down. Well, I'm not sitting down. I'm sitting in the bar stool, and you know, I walked up, I'm tired. So I go, oh, what would you like? I said, I'll have a CC and dry. You know, just, just a drink. And the guy who said, oh, you so you know, where are you from? I was like, oh, from Australia. So like, yeah, it goes pretty far away. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I've been here three days, and now I'm really feeling it. I had a quick quick chat to him, whatever. And he said, "Oh, you you look you here for the show." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, I've never, I haven't seen Gary Ray play in years. Last time I saw him, he had a long ponytail and his single strokes around his oh, like yeah. Yamaha kit." Which I was, it was in the uh, when he was playing with Holdsworth. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I was like, "Oh man, I'm hanging to see him play." And so we, we, I chatted this guy for 25 minutes. Wow. And then he walked over and got behind his seat. <laughs> And I was just like, <laughs> two guys with oh. knew who he was. Oh, and, and they, they were just, just let it go. Let it go. I'm like, yeah, man. That's no, thank you. Like, I haven't seen him. I just, oh, I see. And I'm almost over there going, oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing the. <laughs> <laughs> that's I'm, the best I'm doing all the, the phrasing oh and like, you know, the guy's doing the, the I think it was the Chikri and to, uh, the Tokyo or whatever and he's wow. doing the solo and it's like oh, wow. man, I'm, I'm geeking out <laughs> and he goes oh he goes I have to I've go, gotta I, go. I go I'll be back in a sec and he walks, sits down the thing and the first thing he goes is like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, great. I was looking at him and going oh fuck <laughs> I've turned around my mates are just losing they're just losing yeah. their shit and I'm That's like so he came funny. back and came over I'm like oh, should I buy you a drink like, <laughs> you know, he goes, yeah. he's like yeah man yeah buy me a drink you know? <laughs> so we ended up hanging out for that night which oh, was wow. yeah oh dude it was um, it was phenomenal and so like I've I got to go back to, to Anaheim or at Nam or whatever and he's like yeah I've been in Nam and you know yeah okay. I was like, yeah, it's my second time here. I'm, I'm already over it. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's yeah. good, but it's, it's, you know, it's the hangs. I've never it's been. All, no, it's all the hangs, man. The hangs yeah. are great. Like, I walk, I walked out of a bar. Uh, I actually walked out of, um, oh, what's that? Uh, Bubba Gump Shrimp. Oh, yeah, right. I yeah. walked out as Eric Hernandez is walking in. Oh, right. And I'm like, dude, Eric. He goes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, it's it's reduced from Facebook. Goes, oh man, how are you? Are you leaving? <laughs> oh yeah. So I, so we walked back in, had a drink. There, Eric Hernandez. There's you know Steve Vai's current drummer. There's Peter Erskine. I'm like, uh-huh. it's all about the hangs. Yeah. That, and then they, they all say the same thing. Yeah, that's kind of a thing you have to do, but it's after you know. Yeah, right, yeah, right, dinner, right, whatever. Right. Um, but yeah, it's so like yeah. I actually find. Um, you're probably the, maybe the same the same situation we're talking about. It's like you're learning, like when you're involved and you're, I mean, you've got the drum, you've got the playing side of things, but the hanging out, yeah. you learn, if not the same amount, but if not more. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think you learn more about the way that the social aspect of playing music works. And you just come from someone who goes, I have no social concept yeah. whatsoever. And no, you're hanging out with two of the greatest yeah. drummers of all time. Well, you know, when you're just... You're with the, that's the, I'm sitting there going, drums, 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 basically, you know. But that's, I mean, that's, that's awesome, man. But yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. You know, I think that there is, you know, a lot to be said for, um, you know, the networking aspect of stuff, and I'm not particularly good at that. You know what I mean? Like, I think I personally I've always think... been, I always sort of been more focused on the the actual doing of things rather than getting out and. I, I, out I know, because so. I've never. Um, oh, I've never been a. Oh, how do you say, how do you say that that sound like you're. Should be an institution. Uh, <laughs> I, well, we all should be an institution. We all should be, yeah, especially in this day and age. I think what hurt my career, is, and even especially the longevity, is I, I, it's not like I didn't like networking, I just didn't like going out. Yeah, right. I liked seeing bands and hanging out with music, that was yeah. great, but um, the big thing is like everyone goes out, everyone's hang, all these drummers are hanging out together, or whatever, they're out seeing bands and out doing all these gigs, or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, 
I kind of want to do that, but I, I don't. Yeah, you yeah. know. And now, obviously, then I got married, and had a kid. It's like, yeah. even if I wanted to, it's not going to happen. It, you know, it's yeah. very, very rare. It's very sparse. But yeah, um, for sure. Well, look, I mean, I think the thing that having family changes a lot of it, everything. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, and it did for me. And that's and you know, like I love my kids. And you wouldn't, yeah, you wouldn't. No, you would never change. You wouldn't change it for no. the world. But I think that. Um, you know, I'm in a good place now where I'm getting down to the sort of area where I can, you know, have more freedom to be in it's, different places. And it's really funny because um, it's it's something that I've noticed that when you're getting to the age where we're at, yeah, yeah. you know, but the fact that getting out of bed in the morning is like, all right, what part's going to hurt? First? Yes. <laughs> uh, or it's like, oh, I'm going to roll over. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Um, is that it, it gets to this kind of age where you go. You know what? I'm, it's not like oh, I should do something. I need to do something, and yeah. I've got the time, and the, the availability. Uh, I've got the knowledge to know how, I've got the tools. Yeah. There's no excuse. Yeah. So you kind of go. It kind of sinks in. I've been finding a lot of people around this age go. Well, if I do it now, yeah, I'm under right. sixty. Yeah, you know? exactly. Not this like exactly. oh, I'm twenty. I'm doing eight gigs a week. I don't yeah, care, yeah, you know? yeah, that's right. It's like you're just playing because you you don't think longevity. Yeah. You know. So I used to work in finance. For yeah, like fifteen yeah. years. Yeah, wow. Well, so you know, yeah, and it was more of a. I need a to get to gigs. I need a new car. To get a new car, I need a job. Yeah. So I took a started doing you know working in finance as a debt collector. But that you look know. the thing about that stuff. But though, it was it was it, it was. I reckon it's. I think. I don't know. I mean, two minds about it, but it makes sense to me a lot of the time if you do have something like that, because then it frees you up to play. You can music the way you want it. You can choose. You, you can don't actually, have to do it yeah. as a service. You don't have to do that. How I'm going to gig down the road, eighty bucks for three sets. You're like, oh, look. You yeah. Know, when you when you've got that income, you've got that freedom. We go, oh, I've got that gig. You're like, yeah. No, nah, I'm good. Yeah. yeah. You could actually be that kind of oh, selective. It wouldn't say picky, but you could yeah. be a bit more selective about what you do. But at the same time, it's like um, the older I've I've, I've gotten. Because it's inevitable. Yeah. Um, is that you see the younger, see the generation coming in? You go, they're they're killing it. Yeah. I'm forty. Yeah. You know, so um, I need to do something for not just for to you know. Obviously, I used to I couldn't do it back then because I could do it now. But I need to do something before I get moss on my stone. You yeah. Know, I'm standing still. So yeah. um, I know I kind of look at the younger players, younger generation like that, and go, okay, you're doing all these gigs. Yeah, I'm jealous, but I was doing all those gigs too when I was younger. Yeah, but I, I need to do something now, so yeah. it's kind of that bit of a you know younger motivation. Sure, I mean I I guess from my point of view, I'm just focusing on who I was yesterday. Yeah, and trying to be better than that. Today. Well, that's the thing. It's like you can't move forward if you keep looking back. Yeah, and that's I think that's. You know, it's a good way to look at things like, oh yeah, I used to play like this 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah. It's like, but if you keep looking back 10 years ago, you're not going to improve. I'm not going to say any, I've got, oh God, I've got one drummer in my line. I, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I hate shit of... on him. He's not an Australian. It's okay. <laughs> and people who know me know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to mention publicly, even though I wrote a, I wrote a blog about him. But anyway, it's <laughs> right. um, But yeah, it's like yeah, that's a long that's a long story. I'm going to go to that. Uh, but before I know you, we've only got limited time, so I want to touch base on a couple of things. Yeah. How did you get the Dragon gig? Um, well, because you now that you can sing too. You yeah. Can, which is you know I hate you again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I sound like Kermit the, the Frog when I sing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean the singing thing. I was just lucky because my old man is a musician, like a singer songwriter. So you, yeah. and so I grew you up can't playing be a with my brother. <laughs> yeah, I grew up playing in band with my brother since the time I was really little. And um, did that help you? That kind yeah, of yeah, well, absolutely. Kind of, kind of dragon is like yeah. Well, it, all that happened was because you. I think it was the guitarist just, got sick, or something happened where the bass player had something happened. So yeah, well, what happened? You, for you were me playing was, bass. Oh yeah, and he was playing drums. Yeah, that sounds like he was playing drums. Yeah. And, okay, so let me just. Uh, this is what I saw. I saw the video. Oh yeah, right. So and you had the description. Was like 
Someone got sick. Yeah. Oh, someone got sick, had to go to hospital, or it was pretty... Yeah, pretty he was sick enough work. that he couldn't get to the gig yeah. last minute. And was I was like, so, the so the bass player plays drums. Yeah, no, so I played, I played bass. You were playing bass. And sang BBs and played and, my little keyboard. Yeah. And our sound guy <laughs> played the drums. Drums. So, I <laughs> see so that's the kind of gig where I go, people get, oh, it's not the same band. I'm like, this, I've got to see this. <laughs> I'll pay money any day. I want to watch it. saw it, and you were slaying it. <laughs> the good thing about bass, you know, particularly oh, in that man. context, is it's, you know, it's one note at a time with the left hand. So, you got room to think about where you're going to. And because I don't, I've never practiced those tunes, so I, I just had to write the set list but and what were, key it was in. But you went and I was t- like, okay. But for 10 years, <laughs> you, had a good, you good, had a good yeah. practice set. So you know, the, you yeah. know the, the material, but you know, playing on a different instrument. So you, you, you got the Dragon Gear. Been yeah, well, that, like 10 years. that just came yeah. out of that exact same thing. Like, you know, we we're just talking about doing a three set $80 yeah. gig down the road. Yeah. That's actually what it came out of because. Um, I couldn't, Mick Skelton rang me and he said, oh, there's this original gig, it's not much money, it's in Bondi, do you, I can't do it, do you want to do it? So you go and original so gig, went, Bondi, yeah, no, no worries, worries, no worries mate. Right, and it wasn't Dragon, but the keyboard player, a uh, guy called Brendan St. Ledger, he and I really hit it off yeah. and he loved my playing, and then he was MDing for Wendy Matthews. And so then so I got like, Wendy's gig, yeah. and then the sound guy TM of Wendy's band was a mate of Todd's, and when Todd put the band together, yeah. he asked so for a bass player and a drummer, and and he said, oh, I should do Wendy's guys, and then that was that. So if I hadn't done the eighty dollar original gig yeah, down the road, you wouldn't be. Then I wouldn't yeah. have met Brendan, and I wouldn't have consequently done that thing, you know. So that's why I'm I'm always happy to go play. Doesn't matter what it yeah. is, you know. But I think that, but you, I think you're at the stage now. It's like I just kind of want to play. Yeah, well, yeah, not, I, I'm sort of at the stage now where I'm thinking more about what it is that I've got to say as a as an artist myself. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, like I love playing with other people and in other bands in lots of different situations. I, I don't ever want to stop doing that. But what I'm focusing on for me now is like. Exactly what you were saying yeah. before. I've never gone overseas and done clinics or done which, all that stuff, I, which I, I actually I, want to. I would so think. I, need to I actually think that you know you, you got how to get that happening. <laughs> well, you, you you got international backing from a couple of great companies. Yeah, you know, which I mean, we we both love our gear. Yeah, we do. You know, we yeah. both kind of played the same brands. Okay, you, I mean, I'd say I'm the happiest where I've ever been now. Yeah, and you I know that like, sounds look, like the, no, the same thing, but the the DW minor thing is perfect for me. Yeah, just and the, and the way it came about is I stopped endorsing anything for you ten did, years. You was you were the typical Zildjian for Perth Pearl guy. I actually got so. I, I think when YouTube first started, yeah. I posted some videos. Well, and then there were some comments like, that. "Oh, this guy wants to be Virgil or whatever." And I got, I got really <laughs> upset about it. And so I just sort of, between that and a bunch of other things, I, I actually decided I didn't want to do anything except play grooves. And so I, well, well, went well, almost ten years of like not even engaging in a drum solo at all. Before. Jesus, and just writing <laughs> songs and like. Well, um, oh, I heard you. I heard you. He has, you have a solo album. Yeah, we'll touch back on that very quickly in a second. But for anybody who's watching this, because oh, it's on a video, so oh, you know, yeah, right. hopefully it's still recording. This is and this is one of my because you do, you do the Rosanna shuffle with your feet. Oh yeah, yeah, All right. The old. So let's just. Oh, God, that's some sweet. That's a sweet hairdo. I don't think I can play it at the same time as I can record. Oh. Bloody Max, man. Sounds better like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I'll close this one down first. Let's just, look, we've got to try it again. No, it's going to hate me. Yeah, he's going to hate me. <gasps> oh, it's garage band. Yeah, it's garage band. Oh, Getting right. Upset. That's it. Yeah, yeah, see, it is more logic now, isn't it? <laughs> but anyway, so that's that that was actually one of the first clips I came across you on YouTube. Oh, wow, yeah. And you, he, so you're doing the Rosanna Shuffle. Yeah, so well, you, I just so, thought it was the accent pattern with the seat, you know. Yeah. And, and while you're shuffling yeah. right hand and playing the snare yeah. and doing the exact same accent, I'm just like, you know what? 
fuck you. <laughs> that's well, that's just, the only way I can describe it. For me, it was just more a thing of... I, uh, even at that point, I was thinking, like, thinking about, even if it was a double bass drum thing, having a groove, you know, like, for it to be, to, you know, to be as deep a pocket as I could find, even if it was in that sort yeah, of context. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things that I think I'm guilty of sometimes when I play solos, like, at clinics or drum things, is my pet hate in my own playing from way back would be, you know, when I was a kid, a drum solo would be play a beat and a fill, and, and then play a beat and then a fill, and then play another fill, and then play a beat, and then play a beat, and then play a different beat, and then you change tempo to another beat, you, you, and then you play a you fill. You know, you're just describing most yeah. drum solos in YouTube. Yeah, right. <laughs> Which, that's why my solos now, I basically try never to play a beat. Agreed. It's basically yeah, like there's a time signature and a tempo, and then... I, I go have, from there. What's, which is, this is like, yeah. if it comes back to this, then I feel like oh, I've just run out of information. It's like, right, it's like, now, now it's a bit naff. Home gear. It's a bit stock. Yeah, as, as home a, base and yeah. then you play some stuff. But the problem with that is that what's easiest for the majority of people and drummers to because relate to... Because it's almost like, look, look at Vinny, and it's like, yeah. there's no, there's yeah. still musical, but there's no groove. Yeah. He hasn't stopped. Yeah. You know, it's not 984, Ron Morgenstein doing... Yeah, exactly. Even though he kills it. Yeah. Though, right. you know? well, I, look, and it's not... But that's... That, for me, it's not a critique of other people, it's just my own critique of myself. Yeah. And so it comes out of that, and I always wanted to just play a solo where I could move from one independence thing to another. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, or be in this time signature and solo and, you know, maybe play some time, but the time isn't a beat or... It's like... <laughs> it's like, how I, how I describe whenever I do a solo, is like, if you can dance to this, yeah, it's not working. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, you, if the audience is dancing during yeah. my drum, like yeah. a solo, it's like, yeah, yeah, no. Nah. Well, see, yeah. on the Dragon gigs, it depends. Like, a lot of what I'll do is try and do the, you know, rock and roll thing so yeah. that the audience gets excited because it's about them yeah. more than yeah. it's about it's a me. Show. Um, but and still. so if if there's a dance floor full of people yeah. in the song that I take a solo in, then I just tell the guys to play a vamp instead yeah. and, and, and then keep my it. phrasing, yeah. you know, like bend it a little bit but keep it way more bend to and forth. I've seen you bend it <laughs> small a little bit. I, but, I, you know, but, but that's the thing, yeah. man. It's like, so even at that point, I, I don't know, just try to find a logical way to, to move through 15, 20 minutes, yeah. you know, without, I've never been a good planner. I'm not a good planner. So I don't go, oh, I'm going to start with this and then move to this and something else and something else. Yeah, I, I said, when, when um, I can't do, I don't know. People how. say, oh, you should really structure a drum song. Really? Like, really? How? I don't know. I don't know how to do it. I'm bad at it. And it's like, oh, it's like, but you see some drummers like, I saw you do this drum solo back in 1992, now 2019. And you're still doing the same song, like almost no, no, it's like nothing is changed. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And it's like that's when you that's that to me is like I mean it, but like it's 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 like I went and saw it's the not gig. what I want to do. Yeah, I went, it's like it's so, still good, but yeah. it's like I saw it back then. Yeah, I saw it now. Yeah, and it's in between. Yes, yeah. it's been the same thing. So, which is where I think for me, every song I've seen you do, it's always been different. Cool. Yeah, yeah, because even though particularly on the dragon thing, there's got to be crowd things and you there's only so much repertoire that you can vote you, that you can rotate That's because it. I don't want to spend time working on stick twirling <laughs> there's better things to be doing in my life I've got really right? stubby so, fingers I can't I, I do it so, just falls out so you know <laughs> there's a few moves and that's enough and I rotate those yeah. but then all of the information that comes before that is different every time because to me it's I'm in this song it's at this tempo yeah. and it's in four and so then I'll just go wherever I feel like with it you know how did you um one of my band I actually met the, the guys in Thirsty Merc oh yeah years ago yeah cool uh, I don't know I cannot remember the original drummer's name Carl I think it yeah, yeah. Been Carl. I, um, we were sharing a kit on stage at the outdoor theatre and I tuned it oh yeah cool. goes, wow I've never heard that. Like, I've never had a kit like actually sounds really good I'm like yeah I yeah, just it was all up really high. Yeah, cool. was like jazz. Yeah, yeah. It was like d or whatever. Had a chat to him. We hung out with the guy for the band. They were, they were fantastic. Um, and then you're playing. 
like where, where, yeah, where well, that's, this? I mean that because you're still I mean I, I assume you're still doing it because I mean yeah I'm, do, I'm doing a couple of gigs coming up yeah. in March um, the thing about those guys is they don't have a regular drummer do you know they've yeah. got I think they tend to call Mick Skelton first okay yeah and then there's a few of us that are sort of on the on the rotation with you yeah. you know so there's me Gordo and Tim Firth so they don't get anybody Gordo yeah no yeah, oh yeah. man so, I'd, I would I would fly to Sydney yeah just to see that because that would be just so the, the thing is that that is one of those golden gigs where you can shop. I mean, I'm, well, yeah, that's everyone, solo. everyone can that's play so the weird. crap out of their instruments. You know, like, I saw that so, that solo we did at the gastro. Yeah, um, I watched that. And well, I'm that like, was actually, and we were doing a live. I record, actually felt sorry so. for the drums. <laughs> like I looked and they go, "I'm not letting you get my gear anymore after that." It's like next next time you say, "Hey, can I borrow your pedal?" It's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, man, that, look, I love playing those guys because it's the it's the perfect blend of slick, incredibly you know, beautiful yeah. time playing and yep. and everyone's got great time, beautiful touch and, and then everyone's got like super jazz chops and, yep. you know, everyone is interested equally in all sort of genres of music and is capable, you know, it's like, yep. it's a fucking band of monsters, you know, and oh, so when yeah. you get to play in that, it's so much fun. It's almost really like, fun. I'm going to take, it's like, you can literally take not just your uh, your chops, your groove. Everything can just go to eleven. Yeah, because everyone else is. Like, it is, yeah, so. and it depends on the night. You know, like sometimes, sometimes the, it's cruisy. The but some, section as in, soon as um in summertime. Oh yeah, so, <laughs> you know, like I I think that um you know when you get to do it enough times, then it can be slightly different. Yeah, you know, but but I love playing those guys. I'm looking forward to doing it again. You know, like I. The the beauty of Dragon is that it's been such a consistent, long standing gig for me, and also um, I've been able creatively to contribute to that immense catalogue of songs. Yeah. And like my songs exist in the same catalogue of songs, and I've been able to write and produce and and mix the records. And yeah. those guys have always been so encouraging of what it is that I can do who, 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 yeah. who contributes yeah. to them and so yeah. you know like there's some of the records where I'm I, they're my songs with me singing the lead vocals and you know like that's a dragon record yeah it's weird there's, I, a, I, I, there's a record you know as soon as you leave them to go yeah. Spotify if you check <laughs> out you check out the record called Roses which is from a few years ago I think there's like 13 songs maybe 13 songs and 11 of them are mine and about wow. 6 of them I'm singing on and they're like, wow. yeah. So, oh man. So there was I that have, whole period. Not... <laughs> yeah. See, you're too quiet about stuff. You need to. Yeah, I'm not good at that though, you know? And that's why Sim, like, even there was the solo. Because you're the first one. Hey, hey, everybody, I'm doing this. Yeah. You know? See, I don't you do that. Got, I'm more like, it's no. like, hey, five years ago I did this. Yeah. And like, <laughs> it's like, what? You yeah. Know? Well, it's weird. Even, I think what I'm trying to do with my new. Website, you know, which we've talked about. Yeah, we've we're talked about. We can't. Yeah, we're not going to well, talk about. We're we not going to. We'll, we'll all I can say it's is, a it's a teaser. And what I saw and how it's working. You've got a couple of students kind of working through it. Yeah, now. I can say that when it goes live, because I we talked about me. You know, I practice. I'm. I really need to practice more. I, yeah, I, I, I actually, think, you know what? I don't think I need to practice more. I just, actually just need to start practicing. Sure. When this goes live, I'm going to do it. Oh, cool. Because I I need to I feel like because yeah. I you know I actually feel like I'm getting stale yeah um you know I get to a gig and I go yeah cool this, I'm, I'm having you know I'm nothing sore you know I've yeah, worked, yeah you know I've always worked on technique and whatever but I feel like I get home and go you know I could do so much better yeah you know so I don't and when it comes to the next gig it's like oh yeah I could do so much better and yeah. it's like I'm in a record now I'm just in a loop you yeah know? sure um, sure so when that goes live you know I'll I'm going to jump on it. I mean, I'm going to we'll, do it. We'll work something out. But, um, but yeah, I think the thing for me is that I got to a certain point a couple of years ago where I really started to get back into... Because yeah. I sort of disappeared, like I said. I, I almost put myself into exile. I saw and we're still working on the drums myself personally. Pete's but doing shop, nothing. like, this is awesome. And like... <laughs> but you know what? Now, now I'm seeing what you're doing. Yeah. I'd say that weight. Yeah. 
I, I've, it's, it's, it's nothing to compare what's coming. Yeah, this that's is, right. Whereas that awesome. was sort of like... And so uh, the, the thing about all of that will hopefully become just a consistent output of stuff at, at the point, probably in a month. Good. You know, um, but, but I think that I, um, uh, I lost my train of thought, but, but basically I sort of exiled myself from all of the drum stuff. And when I, when I got back into it, I'm, I went and did, um, I did two lessons with Bill, Bill Barkman. Oh, wow. And that wow. was amazing. Yeah. Really amazing. Because my hands have been, you know, I, think, I thought yeah. they were all right. Your hands are okay. Yeah. And then I met Bill. <laughs> they're, just, they're just okay. And Bill was like, okay, you change this and do this and, you know, like like he does, yeah. which is incredible. And um, within two lessons, my hands, because I worked real hard. Yeah. I changed my there's, hands there's within a thing, week. There's one thing I can say about you. It's like, there's no like, yeah, I'll... I'll See if I want to do it. It's like you work hard, yeah, and you focus. Yeah, I just yeah. obsess. Over Especially it. when it's on the bottom of a car. I, I, I was watching, I drove up, going, "What's he doing?" I'm like, he's in the zone, and yeah. I waited for like ten seconds. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> but, but man, let's see. So that was incredible. And then I, in the same weekend that I got the second lesson with Bill, or no, maybe a little bit after that, Virgil was out, and I, I hadn't seen him for a long time. Virgil makes me sweat. Oh man! Uh, in, in a lesson, he were, he. Well, know, I've never had a lesson. With I, had, I had a couple with him back in uh, in the day at Drum Tech. You know. Yeah. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's like I, I walked down there like just like drenched. Just, like I, it was it was a two hour workout. Yeah. You know, it's like I woke up the next morning like you know, <laughs> trying to make a coffee. Like I think so. It's like. He does that, yeah. Like tw- eight, that's twelve, his, eighteen hours. Yeah, that's, that's his, that's his, his thing. That's seeing where he is. Yeah, you know, you go, "Why well, he's dedicated? He's, yeah. he's, he's, he's where he's at for a reason." It's not like, "Yeah, I played a couple of gigs and here I am." You know, yeah. He's actually dedicated his life, his entire life, and that, that's kind of what you, you need to do if you want to get yeah, somewhere. Absolutely. You know, with anything. So, well, we were talking down there, and I mean, um, and he, I was talking to him about double bass drum stuff, and he said, "Oh, do you play double bass drums?" And I just thought, well, that's Dude, my fault. I was actually going to ask you something. Do you know what I mean? I yeah, thought, that's yeah. my fault, not anyone else. Like, the fact that... And even thinking about it now, there's not a lot of footage or anything there's, of me playing double bass drums. Uh, it's pretty limited. It's pretty limited. Know? But I'll, I'll So look. this site, they were basically just going, uh, okay, everything that I've ever worked on, I'm trying to document. And what's well, great. That's great <laughs> because now I can look at it. Um, I was actually going to ask you about... Uh, I'll ask you a couple of questions because I know you've got to get going. Um, so when you are doing like say fasting or whatever uh, I know you've worked on it and you know one of the questions what, that came through on Instagram was how did you develop your hand and feet independence but I might actually ask you this in a, in a, in a different roundabout way is that with your actual double bass work yeah um, at some part of it do you actually just muscle through it mm. like when it gets that real because you, you know if you look at people's Foot technique on double bass. They're, yeah, they're swiveling feet. Yeah, they're yeah. doing heel down on doubles and things like that. For me, my my single stroke technique. Yeah. it's two things. There's yeah. two. There's two basic techniques, right? At any tempo sub, um, probably 150 beats a minute. We're talking so sixteen, 16 yeah, yeah. It's hip flexor. Yeah, right. So it's just a leg movement, yeah. right? Anything. Above that, from one seventy upwards, yeah. is ankle flexion. Ankle flex, flex, you know? yeah, so, yeah. so that floating ankle sort of, yeah. thing, so you which got, is exactly so it's, like, yeah. it's almost like a flutter. Yeah, exactly. But it's, it's I mean, it's like anything. Anyone can do it. It's yeah. learning the control. It's about having it online in any given day, complete yeah. control over it, and for it to be, you know, like on the grid, in time with the hands, really in time. Because yeah. the thing that I find a lot of the time is. <clears throat> My mark for when something's good for me is when it's recordable. Yeah. And if you just set your phone up and you hit go and you're in a noisy room or in a practice studio yeah. and just the phone's in the corner recording, yeah, yeah it might sound tidy. As soon as you close mic that, isolate just the bass drum mic with hit a click. Hit the rigged on yeah, death. exactly. You go. Then have a listen to that. <laughs> then look at how the transients are lining up. Yeah. Then look at every 16th note on the grid. Yeah. When it's as close as humanly possible to being tidy like that, then I'm like, okay, I've got this now. I can move on. That, yeah, and that's and that's a, that's the other thing. It's like 
you do see a lot of these guys playing and go, wow, that's amazing. But you need to actually have that, just that little tick in your mind going, if it was recorded yeah, in the studio, then how, how yeah. tight would it be? Yeah. How precise would it be? And the thing is that I, I've, I'm probably too extreme the other way where I beat myself up about things that are like ridiculously microscopically not in time because I'm perfectionist and so then I and so even bad thing going through recording these videos like just hundreds of videos I can see it takes me forever because I'm like ah I can do better than that I I can do better than that I I watched your video a month later I look at it and I'm like the first one's fine. What are you doing? <laughs> Could have done another six videos. If you, you can actually see in these videos, uh, and obviously the previous content you were doing as well, you're very focused. Yeah. Like you can see like, Always. Like, I reckon if a seagull was to fart in that room, you'd be, you'd yeah. have the eyes across like, what was that? And you'd be thinking, it's, it's good. You deep know? in there. And yeah, you are very deep in there, you know. You, I, I see guys chopping out like it's the, the gospel chops that you're on. Yeah, doing. which is a beautiful thing. And and the thing is that... But you, you, you are, you're removing, you're not doing that. You're actually doing more what? structured, you know, not just chopping out. It's like, you know, they say, how do you get fired from a gig? You, you play over the bar line. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, watching your content and the way you play is that you're a very tasteful, technically proficient drummer. Thanks, man. You're not just going to sit down and chop out. Yeah, well, see, that's always been the thing for me. I, I mean, I had a list. <laughs> I had a list of things that I wanted. We started this in, long and it's constantly yeah. getting... Well, yeah. basically, it was like, you know, to have Jeff Beccaro's and Mickey Curry's pocket. Because I love... Mickey Curry, man. Because oh, before I, I even... Like those two oh, guys. Man, oh. Before I even heard Virgil or Dave Weckler or any of Beccaro. those guys, I was just playing along with records like Brian Adams... And top forty things and, yep. and anything with Jeff Picaro on it. Or, oh, dude, yeah. I was I was Guns N' Roses, Metallica. Yeah, you know, right. Until I got to the whole, someone actually introduced me to like you know Weckl and all that. And yeah, it's like wow, Jeff Picaro played. Like, Who's this guy? Yeah, and it's like yeah, you know. Well, I was sort of lucky because my old man that he being he moved into the country scene, and so. I was listening to Garth Brooks records. I'm, I'm going to... Just all these sort of... Just feels and playing brushes and doing different I'm gonna things. I'm going to quality into something. Yeah. And so even in the last few months, really digging John Denver. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I saw him live when I was a kid. It was amazing. Oh, I'm, I, okay, I've got Spotify. You know, I, you know, people say you shouldn't stream music, but hey, I'm a musician, I'm broke. Yeah. Um, so, and I was like, John Denver, chuck yeah. him on. I'm like, man, this guy's good. Yeah. It's just, it's just yeah. good, you it know? Is. I can't listen to modern. You know, I chuck on the radio. I'm like, just shoot me, man. Yeah. I'm listening to 104, like Gold FM. Like, yeah. You know. Yeah. And when you're in LA, you chuck on Wave. I think it is 96.1, where it's just like Luther Vandross. Yeah, cool. You know, it's all the old. It's like, yeah. yeah. I'm cruising down Hollywood Boulevard, Luther Vandross cranking. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what? In Australia. I'd be embarrassed to do, you know, going down Temple Street. I'm here, I don't care. No, <laughs> man, I'd do it anyway. It's just crank. But yeah, I, I get what you mean. Like, I don't have anything against modern pop music. I just, I, 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 I feel like it's just homogenised and refined down to a point where it's it's really all very narrow and derivative. It, it, it's, not a, it's not a bad thing. I think pop music is always within the parameters of a fashion. It's a, you know, but if you look at, but yeah. if you look at the range of you know what's on the charts, that's it's almost gone from, but it's, it's almost gone, gone from here yeah, to it's like to, a, it's almost gone music marketing. Yeah, it's like know. a bullet tower. You know, yeah, yeah. things uh-huh. dropped in the middle yeah. at some point, and it's just come out it's at a of, point that yeah. is this wide, yeah. where there's the same you know sort of glitchy vocal thing and but the I same chord like, changes and the same stuff. Um, like. Uh, uh, Bruno Mars. Yeah. Like, I listen to that and go, it's it's actually good. Yeah, he's but great. The thing is, though, it's like, it's, he's popular, he's good, but it's like, then you listen to other stuff that comes out, you go, like, I just can't, I can't, yeah. you know. I, you know, it's 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 the Bieber thing, it's yeah. that whole music, and, you know, I'm just, it's, it's not me. Yeah. And it's not, it's not just, because people say, you know, it's like someone said, oh, you're, you're old, you don't get it. I said, no, it's just, I find it shit. Yeah. I, I can't listen, I don't, yeah, I would rather go home and listen to an old EP. For um, sure. I chuck on, th- I, I crank Thirsty Burke in the house, yeah, you know. Cool. Uh, um, I listen to my, the sugar. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, yeah. destroy runs and groove, you know, yeah. futile bread, I call it futile bread machine. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to that, but at some point I go, you know what, my head, 
Yeah. My brain is being pulled apart. I can't. So I'm going to move. And like, you'll go from that. So then I've got, you know, Thomas Lang. I've got Virgil Donati. Uh, then I'll have um, Diana Ross. Yeah. And it's like, it's yeah. so out of the place. Yeah. Um, but one of my, you know. And there is, look, there's new music that's all over the place as well. Yeah. Do you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Which, there's all of that range. But I just, I mean, what, you know, like if you look at a hits of 19, whatever, let's yeah. say 1984. Yeah. Then you'll have, you know, something that's like a 12-8. And then something that's a shuffle, and then something yeah. that's just like a straight up four on the floor. And now thing. it's like, and then something pop that's album, a ballad. 12, 8, what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, it it's like, it's seems like, like even the tempo range and the sonic signature is so similar in so many, you know, commercially successful yeah. songs that that's what I just go, okay, well, this is very narrow band. What are they, what's, what someone was wrote an article like the, the, the tempo for modern music, like pop music is 104 BPM. It's like, that's yeah. what it's at, you know, yeah. dance club, 104, yeah. 108, whatever it is. It's like, gee, you know what, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, because that's kind of where it's at. Sure. Know? Well, I mean, back in the day, I think it was like 128 BPM instead yeah. of the dance. The dance thing, yeah. The dance yeah. Thing. But, but yeah, it's interesting. Like, I, I think the good thing is, though, that in my younger students and even in my kids and everything else, they find bands. Yeah. Like, they actually gravitate a lot of them gravitate away from that stuff and I they actually say, go and discover great music on their own and I'm always surprised because they'll come in and they'll say oh um, you know I wanted to learn this Black Sabbath thing and I'm like what the, the hell where did you show, find this I didn't, you didn't get that what was it in my yeah, email yeah, exactly what did, where did you find this stuff yeah, you know, I, so, someone actually brought it to my attention I was like have you heard this band I'm like the Struts I'm like right, who I haven't just seriously it's 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 good Yep. You know, it's good pop rock music, you know. And, and then Todd Sukman goes, hey, check out these guys. I'm yeah, like, right. I have. Yeah. Because he went to the concert, you know. Oh, cool. And I'm like, I would love to see these guys straight. Think of that, um, <laughs> I don't know how you describe this, the look of the band is that 90s English pop rock Look, yeah, yeah, you know, like the the long the hair, it's kind of greased up a bit, you know. The, yeah, they haven't got a tan because they're in England. Um, and you go, you hear them play. The, imagine Jet, yeah, but now, yeah, and right. just pumping it, you yeah. know. And like, yeah. I, I have them like in the car. I was Ooh. like, who's who's this? He goes, the Struts. Just like, yeah. what? Yeah, and Boston's like in the back and they go, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, but yeah, it's like, yeah, my students bring me stuff and go, can you listen? Like. Dave Weber or Tomatillo? Yeah. Where did you find that? I know. This? One of my like, students came in with um, the, the, uh, the Timbali session. Festival de Ritmo. Yeah. And I was like, he was like, can we learn this? I was like, yes, we can. Yes. I know. Have the chart <laughs> and the player. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let me tell you all about this. Yeah, it's like, back in my day. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. So before we wrap up, because you're going to get in trouble, um, <laughs> I have a couple of questions to ask you. Most of the people who sent me dig questions, well, actually questions, are going, <laughs> Wow, killer player, monster, monster, beast, monster, beast, beast, beast. Oh my God, his feet, I mean, his hands. Like, everyone was so blown away by that minute 50 clip I put up of the like, I video. Oh, yeah. Thanks for that, because I hadn't actually seen that. Oh, sorry. No, I'll send you the clip. I looked at it, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll send you the Dropbox link uh, to everybody else as well. <laughs> um, but everyone was like, just. They didn't like. Even someone goes, I don't know what to ask because I'm just. I, I, I'm, and they started searching for you. Oh, cool. So yeah, that's great. It's like they found a couple of clips and whatever. I said, Dina, watch this one. I put a couple of them. You know, yeah. The remembering video ones. It still blows me away. Oh so, yeah, cool. It's, I'll, I'll link. That's just what I, I was at teaching and the student didn't turn up and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna practice. Let's go practice this. It's like <laughs> no big deal. Just some Vinny stuff. I'm like, I hate you so much. <laughs> so another question is now. This we <laughs> did ask this one before. Someone goes. I want to know how he does his hair. Oh man, it's, you know, it's an incredible <laughs> regime. <laughs> I wake up in the morning and that's it. It's like, you know, I shower and that's it. Yeah, I shower. Well, I have to assume you, I mean, it's, yeah. yeah. No, we shower, you know, I shower and then... Do this and then... Do a bit of that. There's yeah. a couple of... If, you, if you've if you got um, really fine, straight hair, yeah. there's this powder, you can get like a... Uh, powder? Pl- yeah, it's a texture powder. That's the... Yeah. I've got some in my bag. He's actually, is, is this. A, this is a legitimate question, we've got to do it. We got, this is a legitimate question, we have to do this it. This is a legitimate question. Oh, it's not in my bag. Oh, gee, you know what? But the thing is that. that you probably left it your last gig. No, I didn't get that. It's at Sims House, but. Um, 
What happens, I think, is it then seeps through the head into the skull and yeah. into the brain, and then it helps your independence. It fires neurons in a different way. So, um, so, you, so you, get this... you need to tell me what this stuff is yeah. called so I can... Because it, it's better to become the link. most popular prop of all time. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> I don't so you take can, it that seriously. It's, it's suddenly the... Uh, <laughs> Some random people in black suits will tap my doorstep. Like, mate, you can't, you can't talk about this. You can't, you can't talk about the secret power you put in your hair. Um, oh, it's uh, funny. The hair thing is hilarious. Another thing is, um, someone said about health and fitness. Yeah, um, well, um, I, I mean, I went through a period where I did nothing and put on a lot of weight, and then that's, I think that's between. I think that's like twenty-eight to thirty. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So and like, then I was like, I'm going to start running. So then, so I, you, then I got yeah. into a, a regime for probably uh, six months to a year, where I did, I did it, I did it really consistently, and then it, you know, forced yeah, off. Yeah. Um, where I lost about ten kilos, and wow. you know, like, and and got much fitter, and I've been able to maintain that, and yeah. now I'm I'm actually again back working out and, and doing stuff because the the effect that that has. Um, for a couple of reasons. One is, it, it tends to be a bit of a linchpin for me. Yeah. If I'm physically active, if I'm doing some exercise every day, then everything else falls into place. Yeah. It's just it's, by changing that one. It's also thing, the mental you aspect. Change a lot of things around that. You know? I, I won't. I won't go into because I've, I've I've suffered something recently. Nothing. As we know, nothing yeah, bad. But I, will, yeah. I actually do a separate podcast. It's be me talking. Be one of those podcasts. That's like, good. Yeah, it's yeah. I think I think also. I should I, come around. I'll just ask you questions. Yeah, you, I don't know what you can, can ask me, but uh, sure, man. Come over here time. Oh, I'll watch these little movies. <laughs> well, you know what? We'll come over. I'll get the VCR. Out, we'll watch DCI. Yes. Back to basics. The well, next. We step. should do that. We should do that. I actually was thinking about doing a YouTube thing where. Remember when we were. Um, this is a total aside, but remember when we were Facebooking and you said, we were talking about that solo Virgils, and there was playing that, that four limb polyrhythm thing. The powder ball? Well, no, the one where it's like oh, three against four, three against, against four, and five then against seven or five something. Five against like seven, yeah, yeah. And you put up a clip of yeah. that, and I was like, literally, in if I half an hour or something, I got off the train, I was like, yeah, this is the thing, this is what it is. And I was like, I saw it, and I like, I was like, what's that? I said, Pete just sent me the thing. It's 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 this 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 and this. And Tara was like, what the hell? I said, let me explain that to Pete. <laughs> I was just like, you know, because it was like the thing is, like, it was like it was late. It wasn't early. It was quite late. Yeah, and it was I'm like, like, and you know what? I don't have a kit set up. Got yeah, in the house, yeah. and I'm actually sitting on the table tapping it out. Yeah, and I'm like, I want to. I actually never delved into it, and I do want to get into polyrhythmic and also polyrhythmic. Metric modulation. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's all beautiful stuff, you know. Like, and it, people think, oh, it's all it's, it's musical mathematics, but you actually can make it. You man, can make it musical. I don't, think, I don't care. I like what it sounds like. You, th- know? Th- you know what? And this is that's this is the thing. I'm debating, and I have been debating like this for the last. And, and people have noticed me bullshitting about the last 10, 15 years. I have about maybe seventy tr- guide tracks for my solo. Album. Oh wow. But I've been slowly deleting them, going, no, nah, I don't like that, don't like that, don't like that. Because this means, like, I don't like that. Yeah. Because I can't write. If someone goes, write me an original track. So like, I can't. I actually think of the title. Oh, yeah, cool. And I actually write the actual part. It's a good way of doing it. Because I can't. I, 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 um, I just wrote a track, you know, recorded some stuff really quickly, loosely, and sent it off to a guy in the States and go, this is what I'm working with, whatever. Because I'm actually going to go record it. Yeah, awesome. You know why? Because. Because you, know. you should. Well, it's, it's, oh, no, oh, yeah, I know. The thing is that what I've what i what I've started to realise is that, like, my Dropbox is full of stuff I've written, yeah, and full of me playing the drums and full of videos of me doing this and that and the other that don't exist anywhere except in my Dropbox. And, that's, that's and what, if you don't actually put them anywhere, then nobody does, and I then you die, and I, your Dropbox is. That's I put it. I put this. There's a, this a, a funk track I wrote. It's it's hilarious. It's people. I actually played. I had a bass player said, just do something like this for me. You know, he did it and we did the main groove, like the head. Um, and he goes, what's this called? I said, don't laugh. No, seriously. Is that what it's called? No, no, no. I said, I said please don't laugh. Uh, I said, please don't laugh. I got this inspiration from Quincy Jones. What's it called? I'll take you shopping. Yeah. And he's like, nice. why? I said, because there was an outtake of, of um, Stevie, uh, Ray Charles singing with Braille. Oh yeah, well. Like he's singing and he's reading the Braille and he said, 
because he goes, did you just say I'll take you shopping? He goes, yeah, I did. Yeah. And then I just lose it. I'm going, that's, that's a good cool. funk track. Yeah. And it's a dance club. Cool. You know, I think of Jojo Mayer and Nerve. Yeah, yeah, cool. S. You know that Vinnie Coyota track on his whole album? Um, I think it's the second, the second last track. He's yeah. got Shakers. He's got m- Mimosa. I think Mimosa, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's a combination yeah. of that. And it's like, I took inspiration from that, called it this. And then I wrote uh, a track where it was... Um, I do a thing with my, my right foot. So I'm sure you do a lot with your right foot. <laughs> You can simply insert that's what she said in this, this conversation <laughs> so quickly. But it's, it, I do this, and I've done it since um, as long as I can remember. And um, I, I, when Steve Gag did a clinic, I actually stood up and asked him, like, I actually said, Hi, you know, it's Dr. Dr. Gad, and you're like, Am I doing this right? Because I, the only way I could describe what I was doing was that I saw in the reflection of your. Because remember in the day, you know, you didn't have everyone. No, you, you couldn't pause. You, didn't have you had to look at a reflection speech. of something, oh, you know. Oh, man. So I saw his foot doing this thing in the reflection between the reflection of his drum head and the floor tom. I'm like, and I could see him doing it. I'm like, oh, I wonder how you do that. I wonder how you do that. And one day, I just, oh, my God, I'm doing it. I just yeah. happened to stumble across it. Started doing it. And now I'm doing 16th notes of my right foot. But I'm now doing, I'm not on, on the downstroke, but on the upbeat as well. So I can actually do floor tom. One hand, one foot. Like, oh, oh, neat. Yeah. So I can do it. Neat, neat, neat. Hand, and, and, you know, that kind that's of, great. Completely unmusical. I mean, nah, <laughs> yeah. that's, a bit, that's a great but technique. You can play Michael Jackson's Black and White, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Simple, cool, you know, cool. Three, five, sevens, yeah, you know, yeah, nines, yeah. and things like and that. And have them strong. And have them strong. Yeah. So, um, and then I, so I wrote a track based around that, that cool. everything is... Uh, I won't say the title. I'll tell you after this. Yeah. It's everything is um, apprehensive. Yeah. Okay. Like basically, it's like it's like I want to do this, but yeah, it, it, the whole track is like it doesn't feel comfortable. Yeah. And that was it's like I had, I had the title and went. I don't feel comfortable. You know. Yeah. And yeah. I kind of saw a, I saw a thing on YouTube going. Uh, this this certain machine his guy built was like it's called this. I'm like. I don't like hearing this, like the sound it's making. Yeah, right. It's very awkward and it's like almost gives you spine tingles. And yeah, I, went, okay. I don't like it, but I want to hear, listen to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. right. Yeah, it's yeah, still yeah, cool, yeah, you know? Yeah. So I wrote a track around that and cool. I sent the title off and wanted it to this guy. He's like, he's like you got to come over and record it. And it's like, but if I do that, then I then I was like, I have to, I'll record it and then I have to launch it and then people are going to hear it. And it's kind of like, it's only been this year, I've gone, if I don't do it now, I'm going to be 60. Yeah, that's right. Or I'll be 70. And my, my son's going to go, oh, you were, were you a drummer? Were you a drummer once? So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, I, know I you, feel the same. I know you, I know you got to go because yeah. you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> um, so, let me ask you Since one more. I've got the one car. you got the one car. <laughs> for the, for the, you'll, be, you'll move you soon. No, that's uh, fine. <laughs> um, will we get another song? Yeah, definitely. I think... Um, I mean, there's, I've got a lot of tunes already. Yeah. The, the funny thing is that I feel like in this day and age, it's more just like put a song on YouTube or put, you know, put a collaboration or something At least they're, doing, at least they're not doing drum covers. Yeah, but, we'll but see. The Garden Wall, though. Yeah. It's like, I mean, that's I, one. I, I, <laughs> my, when you point to that, it goes, what do you do when you got a sort of classic demo? <laughs> like, Play a work or cover? And it's like... Yeah. Yeah, because you yeah. know what? That's what we all did. Yeah, you know, of course, the, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the thing is that I was selling that kit, and I really wanted to give it a good send off. So it was. But more... you still, you still got it? No. Oh, no, you did sell no, it? Yeah, I got rid of it. Oh, I sold it yeah. to um, Tony has a party's son, Tyler. Oh, you, and you know what? So I went to a good he'll, home. He'll have it for twenty years. Oh, yeah. and, and it, he'll probably call you. Go, hey, um, it, look, do you want to buy yeah, it? Back? It went <laughs> to it went to a good home, you know, and um, but but that was that was sort of a fun thing, but. I mean, I'm, I am going to do drum covers, but not from the point of view of doing drum covers. It's just for... We won't talk for, about that one. Yeah. Thing. I mean, I want for my... One thing that I feel like there's, there's not a lot of is sort of long form uh, part breakdowns for songs. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, for my okay. students, yeah. there's not a lot of like when they go home and we've gone through the lesson together... That then they can go. Oh yeah, what what did it look like when you go to the crash symbol there, or what is that 
filled sort of look like. They have to look at the notation, which I want them to do, which is yeah. perfect. But for some kids, they learn better visually or... You and, know, and, and orally you know, as well. Or, yeah, exactly. I, I, was so, an, I was a very much an, uh, an oral learner, like... Even now, if someone said, "Look, we've got four songs. So, you know, can you come to a gig? Four songs." I actually just put them on in the car and listen to them on the yeah. way. Oh, that's cool. Because I mean, I also come from a mathematical background that most modern music, and even uh, yesterday's music, um, has a formula. Yeah. And as long as you learn intro, you know, verse, verse, chorus, verse, yeah. chorus, bridge, chorus, chorus. The now, chances are the chances are you're gonna get as long as you get some of the stops right, you know, yeah. and the accents. Yeah. You pretty much as long as you follow. I mean, and I've always kind of learnt that way yeah. I mean someone gave me a chart go yeah give me a minute yeah. you know, like, I can't sit there I'm not Vinny I'm not Bozzy I'm not you know yeah, right. uh, if you go to the black page give me three 15 weeks it's you know um, yeah well see I was lucky that I learnt to read early on and it was just part of yeah and, and something that I kept on top of you have to keep on top you know, of that that's what, that's what I find with... and so it's good because now like sometimes um, we do these gigs where it's the pure gold thing so there's Tons of acts and Gordo's there most of the time, all day yeah. Yeah. playing. And then quite often I'll get up and play double drums on some things. Yeah. And he's got two big iPads and he just gives me one with a chart on it. And so then we just like, go, just read the chart, you know what I mean? So then it's great from that point of view because you don't yeah. have to, you don't really have to think it's like paint by numbers if you can yeah, read yeah. that well, you know? I, it's a good skill. It, it is, really is, is, yeah, super handy. It's yeah, but as I said, it's like I find with feet, it's it's one of those things that it's almost a daily. Yeah, you need to work on it daily. Yeah. Or everything should work on daily, but feet get lax. So well, quickly. the thing is that I found too, when I thought my feet were good, yeah, I couldn't. I still couldn't rely on them. You know, yeah. I'd be like, I'm having a good, my, oh, I'm having a good day with my feet today, or I'm having a bad day with my feet today. It's like, no, dude, your feet aren't good yet. So, I can sit down on pedals and hit particular things any time I sit down did you, under any conditions. And I never was at that point. I, really, I would have thought, oh, man, my feet were good. But then I'd go for things. I'd be like, ah, I didn't come on. Man, I was what the hell oh, why didn't that? Oh, why didn't that? You know, like, I can do this at home. I can do it. It's like, if you can't do it under yeah, in context like, at that moment, then really it, well in time. At least you worked on it. Then you don't have it together. Well, it's right. It's, it's one, I, so that's my personal opinion. Well, it's actually, well, it's a, no, it's a good opinion. But you know what I, I mean. I know, I understand. And that's, the, and that's what I judge myself on. Virgil's going to the interview, and I only just saw it the other, other day, where someone's asking him some questions. Like, it was one of those question comes up he answered you know yeah. and he said favourite philosophy he goes God made me great but not yet yeah and I'm like oh God it's good that is yeah. so accurate yeah. you know he's, he I mean he's uh, uh, like all of us you know like one of the big things as I say being in Sydney I never got the opportunity to go and have a lesson with him or anything and I, I need, yeah. I've gotten to know him a bit better in the last couple of years you know he's he, the thing is like, he, and he's such a lovely guy he is you know. so uh, last time he was here we played at um, at um, Bird's Basement here yeah and yeah um, the Holdsworth thing I saw yeah, it yeah and like it fucking amazing uh, soon, like, he came, it was the thing is like, what I've noticed about especially people like Virgil is people want to approach but don't yeah. they're like oh it's Virgil it's you know or it's this person or whatever and I walked up and said mate great to see you again gave him a hug you know shook his hand I said that was the most amazing interpretation oh, yeah. of, of, of what you like of, of Holdsworth and yeah. it was phenomenal and mate tasteful yeah. and I miss the guy I miss him I, I grew up with him we yeah, all see yeah. I mean come on I know man, man. that and, music is my bliss yeah you know? and he said to me he goes oh man what do you think of the kit you know I was like Pur- is it Purple Heart because yeah we're talking about it for ages yeah. someone comes up says something goes oh, I'm going to go to work <laughs> and it's like it was like we were, we were having that kind of a yeah. You know, he could relax for that That's minute, cool. you know. Yeah. And I was like, and I did get, didn't get a chance to say goodbye. So, you know, I, I waved and he waved and whatever. Yeah. He's one of those kind of guys that, um, you know, like like anybody that have they have a private life. So people are like, yeah, I'm a bit more open about it. You know, him. It's about music. It's about drumming. It's who he is of what he does. You yeah. Know? And. Every time I've seen him backstage at Drummer's Day, like I think it was hilarious. I had a Superman T-shirt on. Oh yeah, nice. And he had a, I think he had a Green Lantern, and he he went like this. He actually opened up his chest. I'm like, oh, he came over and he bumped me. You know? <laughs> I was like, 
And we had a chat. We we're talking about how he's a flight man. We had staying. Asked him about his mum because, you know, she wasn't doing well at yeah. the time. And I gave him a big hug. And um, and we chatted for about half an hour. And I said, mate, I love. I know you're only here for a couple of days. I'd love to catch up with you and just have a, have a coffee. Um, he was like, I'll, I'll shoot you a message if I can. You know. Yeah. So it's like that thing. If I'm ever in the states again, I'd love to not sit, not to sit down and go. Hey man, tell me how you worked on this polyrhythmic blah blah blah. Yeah, well, so that's sit down and go, beside the point yeah, for me. You kind of go, hey man, how you feeling? You know, like, yeah. Um, yeah, he, he, yeah, it could be anything. It's like, yeah, I'm a bit tired, getting over a cold or whatever. It's like, you know, a lot of people want to like, go up to him and say, how, how do you do this? How do you do that? How do you do that? You know, it's like, hey, hey buddy, how, how's the flight? How's your traveling? You know, how the kids? So no kids, but you know, it's like, I find a lot of people who are at that status or who are at that or, or are getting there very quickly, um, people are more like, I want to know how you're doing it, not I want to get to know you. Yeah, you sure. Know? And, um, well, the, the answer to how they're doing it is evident. In if their, you, if yeah. you look at their playing and you listen to what they've played on and you sit this, by yourself it, and you analyse it, it's like, the, the answers are all there. It's like, exactly. And the other thing is like, I, I kind of go... Um, they worked on it. Yeah. There's no shortcut. That's it. That's, There's that's no it. magic pill. Someone asked me about uh, something I did, and I'm like, really? really? You want to... Oh, okay. Um, I did... Oh, this is how I worked on it, you know? I don't go, this is how you do it. Yeah. This is how I, I developed it, you know? Yeah. And it, it was, oh, okay, so, you know, go, go this, this, this. And I just... I kind of got to the point where I was like, well, well I'm happy to show you. We'll have a lesson. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh. Oh, yeah, don't worry about it. It's, yeah, it's right. like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, it's an interesting thing. I, I mean, I'm almost, I'm, and it's another conversation, but I remember when I met Vinny one time, and it was... If, if, everyone's got a Vinny story. Oh, man, Everybody's got a Vinny story. But it was just funny. It was one of those exact moments where I just thought, this, there's no way for this to go well. <laughs> if I start to, if I ask him anything about the drums, it cannot go well. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. And, um... And so I just avoided that, like the plague. And then we ended up, you know, talking for quite a while, like about half an hour or something. Yeah. And then he eventually was really open with that. But I had to pass an audition first. There was like yeah. an entrance exam of, was he going to deal with me? Line, you know. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, was, I, had, I had something similar fun. with Weckle. Um, he was in Melbourne. I just got my muscle car and was, I was building it up or whatever. And he has a Corvette and he races it um, yeah, right. in, in LA and I walked over and said I said hey hi, you know hi Mr. Wickle you know he's like hi call me Dave you know it's like, you? and I said how'd you go with the Corvette did you end up getting that cam upgrade and he the look on his face was like oh cool what you yeah know, I can what, talk about cars like, what, what's going on here and it's yeah. like so did you decide what lobe separation... Like, start... Because I'm mechanical background from my yeah, partner, right. so... I mean, no. And I was just chatting to him, it was like, what lobe separation you go with duration, you know, right. what lift and whatever. And he's like... I was like, he's like, I'll oh, take a seat. Yeah. And we started... We talked about cars. And, yeah. you know, how, how's he going with racing in my car? We had pictures, you know. Yeah. It's like, I got to the heads off, I'm milled in 10,000, rates of compression, you know, up from, you know, 11 to, you know, from 10 to 11 and... Push rise and all this, yeah, the cans too big for the car. We're just chatting away. But as soon as someone comes, he goes, oh, hi, hi, Mr. Worker. Hey, what was that ride symbol you used on Master Plane? Oh, he goes, I need to go to the bathroom. Yeah. I never saw him again. Yeah. And he actually left. <laughs> like, yeah. And I was like, wow, okay. The thing is, man, like, I, yeah, I think, like, I love, if, like, I don't mind when people want to, talk about the drums like if, you know yeah. if people come and talk to me about the drums I'm, I'm, I love the drums so I'm happy to talk about it but I understand if you just get it non-stop yeah. it just must be like yeah it's particularly when they're, it's sort of mundane things like that like what sticks are you using or what sort of heads are you using or I'm, you know yeah it's sort of like they cover you know if you really what was the spring tension on your bass yeah, drum pedal on this track? Uh, what does it matter? I think <laughs> because, you know, I yeah. honestly think that there still is, you know, and I don't know every person on the planet, this is just my observation, but I think that there is still that culture of, you know, wanting the secret. What's the secret? Yeah, you know, like, what's the, the secret code? Yeah, yeah. What, what is the thing that you are doing that makes it so effortless for you or makes it so great? 
the answer is just you know it's a combination of things it's mostly it's just self discipline yeah. and conscientiousness and self belief yeah yeah and perseverance you know and those guys i think um you know, like everyone's affected by negative criticism or, or any of those sorts of things. But it's the difference it, between, especially more widespread now, due to obviously. Yeah. I look, I, I like, I put my reviews up on Drum Gear on, on YouTube, and man, yeah, you know, and you know what? There's haters. Well, the thing is that that you know, you know, in some ways, it's sort of good because we know that culturally now. Yeah. Do you know, like even ten, twelve years ago, that wasn't really a you know, it wasn't haters really, wasn't really even a or a troll. You yeah, know, it's it was like, like I don't even know what that is. Just somebody saying shit about me that makes like me feel. People bad. didn't go. I'm going to go to the dance chambers clinic because I don't like his playing. Yeah, yeah. Well, why are you going? Yeah, you know, so. exactly. Yeah. exactly. But um, but you know, like I think with people who really achieve great things, the distance time wise between when they feel defeated and they get back on the horse. Yeah. Is very short. Yeah. For yeah. a lot of people, and I've done this at times, you know, like, it might take me six months to recover. Six yeah. months to stop feeling like I'm rubbish and then to actually start working on it again. Because it's... But if you just get straight back on it and you just go, look, I feel like I'm nowhere near where I want to be, but I can move forward yeah. from yeah. here. You know, you just get get back up. It's how quickly you get back up not... How hard you fall, I guess. It's also, uh, that was in, um, that was in, uh, oh, uh, it was in Creed. It's not oh, like yeah, so right. He actually said, it's, it's not, you know, um, it's what life's about is, you know, getting hit and taking hits and getting back up. Yeah. And you just, just got to keep taking them and yeah. keep getting back up. I yeah. mean, well, it's, it's really funny. My life, my dad said this, he goes, you know what life is? A whole bunch of shit. With little tiny bits of string called happiness in between each one. <laughs> it, you're yeah. never going to find happiness. Yeah. You're always going to find glimmers, hopes. You, every, you need to get through the shit yeah. to get to that little bit of happiness. You yeah. Know? Which usually, it's all, all worth the while. You know? Yeah. It's like how I see with, um, um, not just drummers and musicians, but like, I see people going through, oh, we went through IVS for, for seven years. Yeah, that's right. And it's like, but now we have twins. You're like, yeah. well, that seven years? Yeah totally worth it you know yeah. uh, and my look, a, a bit of a personal story very quickly it's like my one of my family members my cousin's gone through a, a rather lengthy battle in court and I said to her all the money you've spent all the time the tears the stressing the fear whatever it's all worth it yeah because the outcome is what you it, you got your outcome and it's like and you do it all again for the same thing you know and she, and she was like she was in tears she's like absolutely I'd do it again yeah so, you know, it's it's, just, it's the same thing with drumming. It's the same thing with like, anything. It's like you need to work towards it for that little bit of glimmer at the end. Yeah. And when you go, I've got it, everything that was behind it is, is yeah. done. It's yeah. gone. You know? I agree with you. And it, even, even at a shorter time frame, at the end of a practice session, you have that feeling of, I did it. I've done something. It's yeah. the feeling at the end of it yeah. that you've got to remind yourself of in order to begin doing it. it's like you were saying about working out or any of those things yeah. it's like I don't I don't enjoy working out I don't enjoy the process but it's I like, love having done it it's like I, I love having I, done it yeah, that it, time it, I love having done it the time it's also that it. changing of the mental state is sort of like it's don't see this as work yeah it's like I'm working out you know like I'm yeah. at the gym yeah this is fun I'm loving this no you're not loving this no one goes yeah this is the best thing I've done yeah. I can't wait yeah this is great yeah, so yes. when you put the weights down great. You're leaving, you go, I feel better. I actually feel, feel better. better. Yeah. That's what you work towards. And yeah. I think that's, and that's another thing about people who goes, I, I have to sit down. I have to sit down and practice. I have yeah. to. It's like, no, I get it. You sh- yeah, you have to practice. It's a great thing. But but if you're doing it just because I need to, I need to, I need to. Yeah. You know, when you get to the end of your, your practice session or regiment, you're going to go, right, cool, I'm done. Go back to the TV. Yeah. What have you just done? Now pointless. Yeah. You need to have that at the little of the end and go, yeah, cool, I feel better, I feel great. The hands feel fantastic. I've worked on this, I've worked on Ted Reese and Capation Exercise 1 with this Ostinato, you know. Yeah, yeah. And you feel good about it, then what you've just done in the last hour is, or the last five minutes is completely worthwhile. Yeah. But people who sit down and go, I, I need to play because I need to play because 
the internet told me I should practice yeah, 12 hours. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You, you could tw- practice 12 hours, but not uh, yeah. physically develop anything. Of in, course. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's really what my website and the whole shtick that I'm on about now is, is about helping people to know how to practice because... A lot of people don't. Well, yeah, I don't think... I need to work, I need to work on my paradigm. Yeah. It's like, why only one? Yeah. <laughs> there's why only one? You, you know, there's which stuff you there. And which voicing? Well, that's yeah. the other thing too. And it's like, you know, there's a lot of... There's just so many steps all of the time that get lost. lost yeah. Where somebody, you know, you watch a YouTube t- tutorial and someone... Plays a thing, yeah. explains it to you, and then leaves you alone to go practice on your own. Yeah. That's one thing. Or worse still, they go, "Oh, here's a paradiddle," and then you put it around the drums. Yeah. So you do, what you should do is apply a paradiddle to the drum kit. Then they gave you the, they give you the same three voicings that everybody else does, and yeah. then apparently that's it. And they don't even explain the voicings. It's huh. not like put the accent on a crash cymbal with the bass drum move, you know, put the double on a tom next to it, nothing like that, let alone having each one of those, there's, you know, however many voicings there are, I mean, if you took each note and you didn't double up, you'd get 24 permutations of, you know, of inward and outward on the doubles and down, like from a cymbal to a tom or tom tom to a cymbal, and all of those are different moves that I've practiced one at a time, and then... You take the paradiddle and you put it in another rate and then it can s- decide where your hit points are in yep, that new yep. rate. Like all of those things, it's like a paradiddle is not just this it's like, and it's yeah. not just one sticking pattern. It's like you could spend 10 years just dealing with that. Yeah, and you know what? And some drummers like will go, hey, I'm going to take this paradiddle and I'm going to try and stretch this. And you know what? Yeah. You go, I've never heard of paradiddle. And people go, oh, yeah, it's a paradiddle. Like, no yeah. way. Like, yeah. you, know, you look at sticking, that's a paradiddle. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, exactly. And I think, you know, that's again, judging by your website, that's that. This is going to open up, I think, a few people's eyes and minds about how they physically approach a drum kit, yeah, and music in general as well. Well, you know, like I think it's, I think from my point of view, I was just always interested in getting a really deep understanding of whatever it is that I was dealing with, yeah, and taking it, you know, doing as much with one little concept as I could. Yeah. And there's different ways that, that I've worked you, out you, how you, to do you that. Don't you don't just know? see the top wire as no. this, if you see the cake. Yeah. And exactly. you keep going. Exactly. I think that's another thing. I I do have a student going, Yeah, I worked on that and they put it aside. I went, Yeah. Why have you why have you done that? Yeah. It's like, oh I've worked on that. So it's like but why have you so you okay you don't work on it anymore? Because no one I know how to play that. So like, yeah. just because you know the arm movement and then you get the muscle memory. It's like, doesn't yeah. mean you've you've actually really delved into it. And it's, it's something that Darren Ferrugia, um, he actually said, uh, had a lesson with him, uh, had a lot of lessons with him over the years. And we sat down one day and he goes, I want to teach you the hardest drum feel in the world. Yeah. I'm like, but it was, I'm thinking it's going, yeah. And it was just, and I'm like, why is that so? Because you can rush. To he, the eighth note, and this is in the left hand, depending on the sticking, depending you, on the he voice. Said, you could play this 200 times, yeah. and every time it will be different. Yeah. And I said, I was like looking at him going, the hardest part of this is the is that eighth note gap. Yep, between the absolutely, and, and the, the downbeat. And the downbeat line. That downbeat can come early, late. And he, he, we explained it, and you know what? I think we approached that oh, about eight occasions yeah. over the years, yeah. like. I'm like, yeah, you know what? Every time that Motown, that drum fill comes up, I'm like, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Yeah. Focus, breathe, relax, you know, tack it, bow, God, yeah. you know. You know, uh, yeah. it's a little, uh, that's not pocket, that's a little bit right, you know. And, he's, and I was like, man, that drum fill, yeah. like, I could sit here and do that opening to secrets, you know, you go, yeah, 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 secrets. But that, <laughs> yeah, this really, it's almost, it's a bit of a mind trick. Well, the thing that I, I got into approaching everything like that. Yeah. So and that's, that that's simple what, that's what I'm seeing. Yeah. When I play, you know, an independence thing where it's this hand and then a series of things with the left hand and left foot and, you know, like the body split that way or a double bass drum thing or whatever. Yeah. I try and get it to that point where it breathes the same way as yeah. when you get that just right. Yeah. And, that is- and then that's why a lot of the time... I just will never be happy with it because and, and I'm like, you know, this is, 
so hard. It brings back that Jojo Mac. It's but it needs zero. to feel effortless. The, the hardest part, zero to one. It's that yeah. in the that gap, that yeah. tiny little space yeah. is very, very important. Yeah. And, and so it, once this ridiculous bouts of information all layered up at the same time, there's so much room for error. Yeah. And so I love to call this thing. And I actually tell people uh, who ask me about. Oh, you should, uh, I'm thinking about changing my drum head to this to this. I've read this, I've watched that, I've done this, and I've gone, you know what you're suffering from? What? Analysis paralysis. Yeah. You've been analysing it so much, it's not going to happen. Yeah. You know, and when it does, when you true, do work on it, your head is like granite now. You've got so much information flowing around your head, you've lost focus on the actual like point in, in general. Yeah. Um, and I had a student like that. He goes, oh, I did this, and the internet printed this out, took photos and whatever, like, just, 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 just step back, man. Like, literally, take all, all that. If you could take the information out of your head, I would. Put it all aside. Yeah. Sit down, breathe, and just do it. Yeah, he did There's it. Something. Do, yeah, he did it. And goes, and I said, that was perfect. There was nothing. Wrong. Oh, but you know, I should do. This. But then this and that, and you know, I watched this YouTube clip and went, okay, slow down. Yeah, you need to relax. You need to actually let the information in your head breathe. Yeah, you know, and he's like, and he just came back and went, yeah. I think I know what you mean now. You yeah. know, so that's great. Yeah, that's people, really good. Yeah, and people who put things on forums like this, that, the other thing, and won't be come back and go. I just go, dude, relax. Just, a lot of the time, I also think that those people are spending time on forums. Yeah, where they could be. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you. you it's you, like well, you spent, you spent I'd four be, hours. I'd rather be playing piano in that time and learning about. And, you know, octatonic scales and which chords I can play them over, or you know, what like, I, mean? like, I don't want to be thinking it's like about one keyboard for another. What, yeah. Goo, 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 hey, goo. <laughs> yeah, so man, I think I want to do something useful. We were in the uh, we were at our previous house uh, years ago. Um, I had I had a, a glass of red um, sitting on one side of the thing, and I had a little practice pad that had track tra- tra- going through uh, triplets da, 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 oh. working on the molar stuff yeah. I was like this is my life now like, <laughs> what do you mean now <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, and it's like she came home one day from work and I'm on, I'm on the couch again goes at it again no I'm right here <laughs> yeah right so what are you right. trying to do so I want to get I said I was working on my molar stuff so instead of having the, the actual the throw down, the initial downstroke, and then control on the rebound. I was trying to make the accent, the actual, da, 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 trying to get it almost linear. Oh yeah, yeah. And I said, yeah. and that's so it's a small, it's a it's really small. Instead of hearing that, da, da, yeah, da, yeah, you know, yeah. hearing the, da, 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 yeah. you can still hear the triplet pattern. Yeah. But I wanted to get rid of that accent, and just like, how long is this going to take? You said my entire my life. life. <laughs> so um, yeah, man. Oh, look. Oh, you can go down the rabbit hole at all of that stuff. It literally is a rabbit hole. Never it's ending, you know, stuff. for it each thing. The, yeah. I guess from my point of view, the idea was always to have a, a balance across the board, you yeah. know, to have each of those things deep, yeah. but for it yeah. not to be a hard-shaped T in my drumming where it was like, I've got a tiny little bit of all this there, but I'm really good at this one thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I yeah. really wanted to have a big, like, range, and that's what I got really from Gordo and Andy was like have massive amounts of range and be really happening at all of it yeah it's like why would you just be good at the one yeah, no. the, 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 not just, you're not good at the icing you're, you're good at the tiny little cherry on top yeah. it's like you want to be you want to be just proficient at everything yeah. as much as possible yeah. because you know what you're going to get to a gig one day and the singer's going to be sick you're yeah. going to play bass play keyboard that's and, right and exactly, exactly see and it'll be, and it I'm works gonna, I'm going to find I think it's on your Facebook so I'm going to find <laughs> that because it was it was brilliant that's hilarious Pete thank you so much for coming thank in thank you man it's good to see you too. Yeah, yeah we could talk all day um, I've just got to get moving that's, that's okay I've got, I've, I've got to have my first meal of the day yeah oh, I've been fasting since oh night. man you oh. need to get into it I'm actually it, what, the thing is you get to that 20 minutes of like I need mean, to eat up the hunt. It then, builds up and then it's like, oh, it's gone yeah, now. Yeah. So 40, it's a 15 hours of fasting. Yeah, right. It's, when I do eat, it's like, it's pretty thick, oh, I'm going to sit down with a big...